Come a day, gods and universal looks the way the clown takes the show. You must find a way. Wings of firing squads against all the odds. It's become a day. Dig down, do dum do dum to dig down, do dum down, do dum to dig down, and find the gum a day. Yours to these fledge, and you know it's the end, cause it's but come a day. All that perfection, you got no one else. Well, it's per come a day. We'll back to the fray, and we'll go to that valley. It's per come a day. Yeah. Dig down, oh, no, 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 dig down, this is talking tremors now, cause we dig down, I'm but come a day, yeah, bow to the floor, whoa, and you can only see hell, oh yeah, it's on but come a day, Whoa, Valent, oh, they left me here. So I went to Thailand. And then they asked me to kill the drivers again, but come a day. Oh, and you gotta celebrate. When you take you to the edge, no, no, no. And you got no friends, no, it's but come a day. Oh, no, no, it's but come a day. Hello and welcome everyone to the Talking Tremors podcast. I am your host, Bert Gummer. Not that uh, person at the bottom of the screen. They don't exist. Levi Dylan Burzloff Lutt, not a real person. Um, I I'm a real person. I'm Bert Gummer. Um, and it's not my day yet, but it will be. And I'm I'm speaking to you from my bunker. Um, I, Larry was in here earlier. Him and Nancy, and they just went to town. I, I didn't draw any of this. And frankly, I'm not running a bed and breakfast here. So <laughs> I'm going to tear this whole place down. And you know, me and Cletus, uh, it, apparently, he took some interior design classes, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix this place up a little bit. Because uh, I am Bert Gummer, and that's the name of the day, baby. Uh, <laughs> and I have taken over the Talking Tremors podcast. Um, Levi, I, I went back, and you know, 
Just a couple of 44s in the in the old back of the head there. Uh, they were great. Uh, I mean, I didn't kill them. You know, they're great. They're still alive. They're fine. I, you know, I just um, I I disposed of them uh, for a while. Hold on, I, I've got my Burt Gummer TikToks here. I got I, I I was busy with the musical of the song, and uh, which I did you enjoy my song? I wrote that. That was all me. That was uh, not Matthew Bellamy of Moose. What the f what the farts? What the farts? Okay, your settings, everything's you have permissions. What's going on here, uh, TikTokeries? Allow. Only allow. Um, Larry. Larry set a lot of this up for me. And um, he's a good kid. He's a good kid. But uh, maybe got a little distracted. Uh, you know, I wanted to focus on my cool song. My cool, my cool Burt Gummer Day song. Um, and uh, it, that song, uh, you know, I wrote it. I wrote it for my, my favorite fan of all. Uh, who decided, like, hey, we need to have a Burt Gummer Day. Baby Fark McKee's ex. Um, <laughs> fabulous, fabulous fellow. Um, uh, side note, I gotta fit. I'm working on my Burt Gummer. This is not it. This is not it. I gotta find it. I'm I'm honing in. I'm, I mean, no, I'm not because I am Burt Gummer. This is a thing, people. We are here and we're live. And what, I'm, what are you talking to? I'm, uh, uh, I'm not talking to anybody. Or am I crazy? Maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe you're crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, a lot of things happening here. I, I recently received uh, Graboid response stickers, Graboid outbreak response stickers. I didn't want people to know uh, that I do this as a job, but I guess I do. Um, now I got to put this on my my four by four. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> hello, um, but hello to everybody that's here. We got William and Ben and Edwin and Zilla Film Studio. Zilla Film Studio is actually working on their own Tremors movie. I believe it's called Tremors Take Orlando. Pretty excited to uh, see their take on the taking of Orlando. I mean, it's not the Tremors taking or like, Graboids taking Orlando, but hey, hey, hey. I mean, whoever decided to name a movie bloodlines <laughs> you know i look i we were we workshopped that one for a while and uh i had i had uh i had ideas and that's not um i wasn't that wasn't mine that uh you know don michael paul came to me and uh they were making these films and i was like you know i'll, I'll be in it i'll be in it you know i'm beautiful uh i mean i'm I, I got a little bit of my hair back i used some rogaine i got some hair back but you know i was balding at the time and um it's a thing <laughs> Why am I, what is this impression doing over here? This is like, this has got to, it's, because it's, I'm going down too low. It needs to be like up here a little bit more to have its staccato. And I always love and I appreciate uh, the guy who plays me in the other movies, Michael Gross, as the actor, who's like, you know, I cannot uh, improvise as Burt Gummer. That's not possible. Um because it's not okay like side note it's like uh, take these off it's very hard to improvise this burt gummer like one of the hardest things i do on this show um oh no no I, and zilla films i i was more making a joke about uh the taking of uh well because they're not called tremors and and then jason and got oh wait oh i get to do this thing oh i forgot Oh, it shows the comments. Oh my god, it's my favorite thing. I'm sorry, I love that. The comments is my favorite fucking thing. Um, because Jason and Godzilla take Manhattan. That's at least the names of those things. You know, it is Jason and it is Godzilla. Tremors is not the name of the monster. If you said Graboids take God, take Orlando, I'd be like, yeah, right on. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on, I have to, I have to pull up the comment. Look, Edwin, um, Levi needed to take a break. All right. Uh, there were some personal issues with some dancing, and they're beautiful, and uh, we appreciate them. But uh, I decided to take over the podcast because it's my day. You know, that wasn't even per I, who cares about the personal issues? Uh, you know, it's Burt Gummer's day. Uh, I'm in charge. I win. Uh, if you want to, you know, have a po podcast about you on your day, you should. But for me, you know, that's my thing. Um, and I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get rid of this gun right now so I'm not banned and nobody sees it. Uh, but it was a good, it was a good drum, strum, drum. Okay. Oh, I have to. Okay, I cannot. Like I said, I cannot keep up that uh, facade for very long. Although I look like um, with these on, I look like um, one of the people in Jurassic Park. 
like it's that guy in the Jeep, and he's just, actually it looks like perfectly like that. Where I'm just like, yep, dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alan Grant. What you didn't know there were dinosaurs here? Yeah, I uh, I get paid minimum wage for this job. This is horrible. What am I doing? Um, but anyway, so yes, this is the. Uh, I got it. I can't for too long. Like you said, you can't. You can't. I'm not Michael Gross. I can't. Like I can't. Even he would admit that it's hard to be Burt Gummer all the time. Um, that once I can't even like it's I like the hat. I can't even look at myself with the hat. I gotta take the hat off. Uh, but we are here today to celebrate uh two days early, um Burt Gummer Day, started by the incomparable baby fark McGee's ex of Imger. Oh, sorry, this microphone feels like it's in the way. It's been like a month since I've I've podcasted, so forgive me for um being out of sorts. Robot person, beep boop. Um <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I got to get my brain back into the place. That was where the song, you know, I love singing the song. That's always fun. Um, and you know what? I have a jar actually. So I have the jar of olives to eat that one. Actually, that whole impression feels like, um, I need to eat a pickle for this. Uh Oh, the pickles are slightly frozen. They're at the top of the freezer, but that impression. Mm, oh, that's delicious. Oh, uh, I'll do a couple of things here. Because, yes, again, happy day for the legendary Burt Gummer. Again, started by Baby Fark McGee's ex of Imgur eight years ago. It's not started by Universal. And then William asked, <coughs> I want to know the exact brand of those MREs uh, he was eating in Tremors 2. Nobody knows. I would ask, I would try to ask Steve on that, on the Stampede site. But I know the answer. Nobody knows. <laughs> because, hmm. Ooh, that pickle was very good. Uh, because by the time that anybody would have been recording, like, what fucking brand of MREs, which would be this book, it had already been, like, 10, 20 years, 2015, 20, 1996. Nobody remembers. That's 20 years of time uh, to remember what specific brand of MREs you're eating. And, uh, oh, and I just saw your message, Cody. Cody just said, Cody, or sorry, sorry. William Cody, that's why I was I got my brain pooched. Um William Cody is the only person on this planet who is actively or has actively listened to every episode of this show up until you know you just sent me a message that said you're on my the drive back from Tremors Fest video. And this is where like you're gonna like we there's other things we've talked about that you've been here for in the lives. I want your opinion on those other things. I'm not going to bring them up now, but you know what I mean when I say those other things, uh, that other person things. Um, <laughs> because yeah, you'll you'll hear how me and Caitlin reacted after Tremors Fest, and then we're dealing with it uh, going forward. So we'll ah, we'll find out. Um, <laughs> I'm curious. I'm super curious. But thank you, William, for being the only person to actually listen to this show all the way through. Um, super duper love you. Awesome for that. Uh, again, uh, it's April 14th, babies. Burt Gummer Day. Uh, I gotta take this off. This is just not, I'm just like, ugh, I feel so stuffy. Just like, ugh, there we go. <sighs> Let my boobs hang out. Um, uh, which, by the way, William, that message you sent me, I'm not gonna talk about it right here, but that was a, a beautiful, and I appreciate that. I'm honored by your question. Um, oh, there we go. That's what it was. I needed to bring it down. Uh, okay. Anything I gotta do, I gotta go like backwards like this. It's just like it's just not doing me. Oh. Mm. Uh, like Burt Gummer is too much. Oh, you saw my Tremors movies? Oh, thank you. Uh, Zilla Film Studios saw Tremors Far Field and Tremors Hunting Ground. I think they were fun. Thank you, because that was really the goal with those. Was you know. The, well, A, to get other people to make Tremors movies, and then B, to have a good time doing it. Um, so, fuck yeah. I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I got, I got, I, I'll, I'll talk about it now because I'll talk about it later. But I have another idea for another, another sequel I want to do. I've got two other ones. And then now I've got this third one that I want to do where uh, I want to do a Shrieker episode that's like Night of the Shriekers, but like it's 
it starts like with the shrieker attack and like that's that's the whole thing there's no like preamble or cold open it is just like immediacy of like boom shriekers are attacking one location that's it and then you're in that location and you gotta defeat them in the 45 minutes of time boom that's it um that's one that I feel like we'll be doing uh, sooner than the other ones that I've talked about. Uh, Death Dance and Silent Song. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta come up with a name for it. I haven't got the name of it yet. Um, but it's, I, like I said, I just want to do I love Shriekers. Shriekers are my favorite and I want to do one where like fucking Shriekers are just going to town and boom, 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 boom. Oh, oh, oh. Um, yeah, so yes, thank you again Zilla Film Studio um, for liking that. And if you want to tell me your real name in the, the comments, Zilla Film Studio, so I don't just call you Zilla Film Studio, that's great, too. So thank you. Like, that's where I know we got William here and Edwin and Ben. And because I can never say Pangea Stark. Pange, Pange, I can't say it. I just can't say it. It would just be like say, trying to say that. Look at my name down there at the bottom of the screen. I can't ever point right. Look at that. Look at that name down there. Look at it. And and say it to yourself try to say it to yourself i won't tell you what it is you heard me say it already but try to say it at, at, to yourself um oh 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 my god thank you william william is is we're talking about the show here I never get anybody talking actually about the show, so I appreciate this. William is saying, I'm hooked on watching what's next and absorbing all the info. I was trying to find out what I would like to do maybe for a short film. Oh, my God. I, I, you have an idea? You want to do it? That's it. That's, oh, yeah, that's it. And I got to pull up Ben's comment here just to be like, Ben is fine. Um, but you got an idea for a Tremors movie? I don't care. Do it. Just fucking do it because Universal's not going to do it. And you know what? We as fans might as well fucking take the reins and do it. And I'm not, I don't say anymore that we can do better than Tremors 5, 6, and 7. I've learned not to say that um, because Don Michael Paul is cool. And we like Don Michael Paul now. But uh, yeah, I, please go. I'll say better than Universal can do. How about that? So it's, yeah, like just go out and make it. Just go make make a Tremors film. And uh, I would love to help you. I, like I said, Justin's working on it. So that's actually three. I got four of them on the hook where I'm trying to figure it out. Um, uh, the Making Tremors episode. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. The the actual blooper. Um, one where I gave an actual presentation of it. Oh my god, thank you. That was a lot of fun to do. And that was literally a year ago. We, we did that April 21st, like right before we went to Tremors Fest. And that was super fun to, to actually give a presentation on Tremors and talk about it. Like, can I do it to you guys? And like, there's four people here and whoever is over here in TikTok land and whoever's listening later, like you're, I assume you probably know about tremors in some sense so trying to explain it to people that didn't was really fun and interesting um uh, I, I, that was a blast and actually that's what i always keep the um i ended up printing these out or whatever for our 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 brochures that we gave out and this is what i printed the script on for the movie afterwards because i'd save paper um, because that's what you do when you're a Tremors first person or fan. You um, try to save paper and bullshit. Oh, my God. And Russell Bradley Fenton is here. I have to call him out if he's still in the TikTok because I fucking love your um, Val and Earl. Uh, just he uh, it's honestly, it's what I wish more people did, uh, where it's just him dressing up as Val and Earl and, and just doing straight lines from the movie and it is hilarious um fucking love that so much uh so russell if you're still here i love you you probably left because you're like what the fuck are you doing but i just had to call you out because you're awesome damn he did leave that's too bad son of a bitch um i'm gonna invite him back over here i don't know how that works um and jareth and i'll come hold on and jareth i have no idea uh I'm still waiting to hear back yet. Uh, I've got all of his footage and stuff done, and I 
got trailers and stuff, but it's like that's on his dime and not his time. Um, I think it's one of those things where if you have enough money to buy streakers, you're not like focused on the making a movie part of it. I feel like that's uh, and no shade. That's a bit of a vanity project of just like, hey, cool, I get to go out and like look like I'm fighting streakers, which is dope and fun and awesome or whatever. I think he's got other uh, bigger fish to fry. And uh, I, although I would love to help him, and you know that would be a great. Hey, we're going down to Santa Fe in July. Let me just sweep by Texas. Um, and then, ooh, Zilla Films. I actually have pictured how I will end my fan film with a wide shot of Universal Park and a cut to black as a shrieker roar is heard and roll credits. Nice. Nice, man. That's what I did with Trevor's Far Field. I love the shrieker at, like because it's like you don't expect it because you're facing grab boys the whole time. And then, ah, now it's the shrieker yell. Terrifying, but awesome. I'm also listening in the background because I'm pretty sure that my nephews are going to show up at some time. And TikTok person, there's actually been multiple Tremors films that have come out since Tremors 20, or since Shrieker Island. So if you can't find a good Tremors film, that one's on you. There's, you know, I'm not going to say Tremors Far Afield because that was a, a test run. That was an experimental thing and it was very artsy. It was still fun. Uh, that was like, let's just go out and make a movie. However, Tremors Hunting Ground is dope and awesome. And I will stand by that as a great work of art. I actually have to, that's one thing I've been so caught up and busy that I have to finish the post credit scene for Tremors Hunting Ground. I have all the footage for it and everything. I got to finish that. And then I got to get a 4K edit of it uh, of the whole thing done and put back up uh, on the Tremor Saga's YouTube channel um, because that is <laughs> it's really good. I, like I said, I'm really excited for that. Um, so yeah, TikTok person, if you can't find a good Tremors film, that one's on you. <clears throat> um, and anyway, so today, today is not about me. I mean, it's no, it's not. It's still not about. I was going to say make a joke about that. It's still not because uh, today is is Burt Gummer Day. It's about Baby Fark McGee Sax. Yo, um, fuck yeah! And I can't. I got to put on the hat at least when I talk about that. Ugh, I can let my hair down just a little bit. I just like. Wow. Uh, when I gotta take it down, the way I gotta take it down. When I gotta take it. The universal films. No, no, no. Um, so anyway, <coughs> Bert Gummer Day. If you're in the audience, raise your hand or type F in chat or some way of letting me know if you know how Bert Gummer Day was started. I will not wait. Anyway, <laughs> let me know. Let me I'll I'll preamble. Um in, in saying that I actually just texted Don Michael Paul too, and I was asking him uh, whose idea it was to put Burt Gummer Day in the movie. And apparently it was Don's. Don's idea uh, to put the Burt Gummer Day in the movie. Oh, you don't, Edmund? Cool. This will be, you'll enjoy this. Um, it was Don Michael Paul's idea to put uh, Burt Gummer Day in the movie. And I was even, actually, hold on. I got to go over here. I want to look. Um, I assume William knows. Okay, good. Um, because I was gonna say if the, William should know because the second, the first and second episodes of my show are me literally yelling about that for like hours. Um, Zillow Films, do you know? Okay, you don't know. All right, so I asked Don Michael Paul, it was my idea, and no way, how'd you hear about it? And he's like, and don't forget to pay your taxes. Burt Gummer deserves his own day. He's a legend. And then there's actually another text here that I'm not going to read until a, a little bit later here. And then I asked him, I was like, so like, but how'd you find out about it? Was it, did you know, or was it like a random Google? And he's like, no, it wasn't a random Google. I have been celebrating Burt Gummer day. Like, and I assume that's like for a long time because Burt Gummer day has been around for eight years now. Yeah, if you think that Burt Gummer Day is just a thing that happened at the end of Tremor Shrieker Island, well, boo, howdy, do I got some news for you, because that is not the truth. Um, it is not at all. Uh, and I'm really curious. I'm, I'm actually, and I'm texting uh, Don and the creator of Burt Gummer Day, 
concurrently right now. And I'm actually, I was sending Don the screenshots of what B- baby Fark McGee's ex was saying and stuff. So I'm trying to, there's a conversation over here still like currently happening that uh, we'll, we'll get more on and we'll figure out more here in a second. Um, oh my God. Everybody's uh, why is it that everybody decides to message me right when I'm doing my show? So anyway, Burt Gummer day was started in 2016 not 2017 the inklings of it truly are in 2016 uh when baby fark mcgee's ex who is an injury user started um i gotta i just gotta do this because i'm talking about burger every day this feels fine i feel fine doing this <laughs> uh baby fark mcgee's ex started posting gifts of burger and imger is a image hosting site, obviously, um, and gifts are the uh, the love language of that site. This is how you communicate. And do I like Mark Wahlberg? No, I do not. Mark Wahlberg sucks. I just want to state that fact. Mark Wahlberg is a racist and an asshole. I don't mind saying that. Uh, I have a funny story about that when I'm done here. Um, <laughs> and maybe Fark McGee's ex just started their imager history uh, by making Burt Gummer gifts. And it actually started on Firearms Friday. Like that was like, and that's imager has different holidays to the point where baby Fark has actually started um, Farley Friday, where every Friday you post gifts and clips and different shit of Chris Farley, Farley Friday. And it's fucking dope. And baby Fark ended up, it has a, I, I, uh, what's the, ended up becoming known for and has a predilection to making what is known as intergalactic quality gifts. So if you know anything about meme culture and the internet, um, and yes, they are doing a biopic on Chris Farley. Josh Gad is doing it, is directing it. Sorry, I'm answering TikTok questions over here too. Um, and Baby Fark, uh, does intergalactic quality gifts, which if you know uh, of the internet and of meme culture, there is a subreddit called high quality gifts and intergalactic quality gifts are even better than that. They are 4k crisp ass mother motherfucking gifts, man. They are beautiful. And with these gifts, baby Fark started Burt Gummer day. <laughs> like that's literally how like Burt Gummer day, like became into existence is gifts, really fucking awesome gifts. And <laughs> there's a whole thing of like, okay, is it a gif at a certain point when it's like fucking well, whatever, how many uh, pixels, not 10 p but 4k pixels, um, on a gif. Is this still a gif? Yeah, it is. It doesn't matter. And then now I've gotten to the point where, and like becoming friends with a uh, baby fart where I'm like, you know, gifts are cool, but sound gifts are even cooler. And then like, then there's the debate then of like, yeah, but if you add sound to a gif, it's just a clip. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Now it's a cliff. Cause it's a clip and a gif. Now it's a cliff. And now we've gone into a new space and clips are cliffs are the best. Um, oh, and, and this is okay. Zilla films, uh, I kind of wish Universal gave the franchise more credit and more of a chance for the many fans it got. It's that I you're going to really like this show, Zilla Films, because that is fucking like that is the whole reason the show started in the first place was that years ago. I like just made a video that was just me ranting about um, how Universal fucked over Tremors. It was just that was back when I did like under an hour videos and I and I started on this whole thing, uh, uh, the Tremor Saga or how I learned to hate Universal and start loving Stampede. That was a, a video I made a long, long time ago, and um, like it's it Universal should care more about it. And that's it was really nice to hear in my correspondence that it was Don's idea to put uh, Burt Gummer Day in there, and it wasn't just a uh, Universal trying to take over uh, something kind of a thing. Um, because that's that's Don Michael Paul, as much as we all will hate him and have I personally done it, other people have done it. I get it. We can't lay that blame entirely at his door. We can have questions about Burt Gummer being peed on in a lion cage, but that's another story. And then and then the piss fetishing. Well, that's another story. Another story. But Don Michael Paul tr- did his best with what he got. Um, but baby Fark McGee's axe over here, fucking champion cause of of tremors fans 
just decided, you know what? I'm going to do an OC dump, original content dump on April 14th of gifts of Burt Gummer in Tremors 1. And, and that's it. And that's like, that's it. And you're wondering too, just like, so, but that's like, how do we then have a Burt Gummer day? It doesn't matter because you do it once and then you go like, yeah, but I want to do it again. And you know what? I want to do it again later. I want to just keep doing it. Uh, that that makes tradition. I'm thinking of the "It's Always Sunny" thing. Uh, like we're gonna, we made a mistake, and we're learn from it, and we'll make a tradition out of it. Um, oh, there's not, uh, no, there's no Don Michael Paul interview yet. William, is there a Don Michael Paul interview in the upcoming videos? Not yet, but I'll get him. Honestly. I'm pretty sure once his kid, once Jet goes off to college this year, I can get him uh, for sure. Uh, which, on another note, I actually have uh, Charlotte Stewart, who plays Nancy Sterngood, and Finn Carter, both interested in coming on the show. I just have to get time to actually do it. Ooh, my skin's all white. I feel very white right now. Um, so, yeah, I, we're going to have Nancy and Rhonda LeBeck on the show. I'm super excited about that. Ugh, excuse me. Uh, and then who, honestly, who knows? Who knows from there? I already had John on the show. John was fantastic. I got to get John back again. I've just been super, super busy, which we'll get to. Um, and anyway, Baby Fark McGee's act, like I said, in April 14th of 2016, was like, I'm going to do Burt Gummer gifts. There's a whole bunch of Burt Gummer gifts and drop them off. And, and then, so then the thing about the intergalactic quality gifts then is that this is like the standard. If you go to Imgur, <laughs> And you try to, like, your gift has to be crisp, crispy, crispy, crispy cream, motherfucker. And, you know, if you can't do intergalactic quality gifts, then you better have something that fucking stands up to it. And it doesn't even have to be crisp. Like, they just better be good. They better be goddamn good gifts. And I've learned this because I've tried making my own gifts. And I do. I love gift making as an art form i think gifts are so cool it's a great way of expressing to other people in really simple terms hey i'm also feeling this as you and fuck yeah um ooh, and our finn carter and charlotte stewart coming to tremors fest i think finn carter is uh i got her hooked up with the the guy at david gill who works at the violet crown theater who was our liaison last year uh for different the, the see i always want like i hate the word famous people so that's where i'm like nah, i want cast and crew that's the one i'm thinking of the cast and crew i was the one i was the guy i was working with and hooking them up with um and so they're emailing and doing all that jazz. it's out of my hand it reaches that at a certain point i can find your email i can reach out to you at a certain point I, did, I just have to go like this. It's like, I can't, I can't do anymore, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping Finn will be there. And Finn even said too, she's like, Oh, you know, I don't know if anyone like it's been 34 years. I'm 34 years older. I don't know if anybody like wants to see me still. And it was like, Oh my God. No, like everybody there is 34 years old. Fucking Michael Gross is 34 years old. Steve is 34. Ron is Ron and, and Robert are all 34 years older. Who cares? You're beautiful. And we love you and get your ass to Tremors Fest. Please. And thank you. Um, and she, she's trying. So here's hoping here's, like I said, I'm really hoping on that. Um, um Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, you gotta forgive me, uh, Zilla Films, because a lot of the times um, when people say stuff and they're trying to tell, uh, they're trying to inform me of something on the podcast, I always have to be like, "Hold on, I, they don't know that I know." So, like, let me figure out how to assess the uh, the information here. And Zilla Films is saying, uh, "I've been rewatching the franchise, and if you haven't noticed, in the third film, the government guys find like hundreds of year old eggs, and then the fourth film is set in the old west. It's clever. Um, yes, yes, it is uh, because Stampede knew how to write backwards. Writing is the number one thing of Tremors. Directing is whatever. Writing, 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 writing. That's why we're all here, and why we all really love Tremors. In the end, it's because it's so well written." And that right there, what you're talking about, that's Steve Wilson and Brent Maddox 
being incredibly smart people and knowing how to write backwards. Um, and uh, it was, um, sorry, you said, and it was, my, the reason my brain was getting tricked up there uh, was because I was just listening to the horrific podcast with Chris and Colin and uh, uh, fabulous guys. And Chris always has these crazy theories. And what you were just writing there just reminded me of a Chris's crazy theory for some reason. Um, which, ooh, I will, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it later because it's, he's, he had a really good one this last week that I just got to talk about. Um, but then I just, sorry, you're making my brain think of it where it's like, I, and I love the concept of that graboids are like locusts and cicada and like they go into hibernation for like hundreds of years at a time until what, what the reason for it is that they need their food population to replenish. Because if they were around all the time, they would literally eat everything to the point of like, they're not, there's no more food left because they eat, ate it all. Uh, but graboids, they're like, no, we're good. We're going to take a nap and uh, wake us up when the food's ready. Cool. Peace. Awesome. Um, so anyway, about Burger Day. <laughs> and these, so, and I, I, let me know if you're ever want me to really keep on track or if you're just impressed it really impressed that I can go from like over here to over here to under here to up here to over there. Oh, all in the space of like, crah. and uh, the best part is no drugs completely sober besides some olives. So that's booyah. I don't even actually, I think there's some caffeine in this drink edge armor caffeine boost, but I don't believe that. I think it's just power raid with uh, extra power raid stuff in it. I have a canker sore. A canker sore right here. Which, why am I showing you? You're not going to be able to see it. <laughs> and I don't mean that just for like the audio listeners. Like the audio listeners won't be able to see my canker sore. I don't think I can get close enough to the camera. Oh, wait, you can. It's like the little light thing there. Right there. Yeah. Ugh. I dumped salt on it today. And then I grabbed Caitlin's shoulders. And I'm really sorry about that. And I know she's not watching, but that's my personal, like, oh, I did, I like, it burnt my mouth, and I went, oh, and I grabbed her, and I was like, oh, no, I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but fucker hurts. Oh, and now I'm talking about it, and now it's, like, in there, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, yeah, oh, William, oh, cool. And William had never thought about the graboid life cycle like a cicada, or even waiting for food source to replenish. William, that's okay, man, because that is the point of me being here. <laughs> there has to be, there's got to be someone who's like, I'm going to do a whole show all about the tremors, and I'm going to tell you every single thing all about the tremors. And as an aside, I always got to say, a lot of the stuff that I learned about tremors, I learned from the Stampede Entertainment Facts. I, ooh, Ashley Hutchinson's here of Lost Boys Press. I know she's not going to care, but I just got to be like, fuck yeah, Ashley. It's too late for it. Actually, it's not too late. But go donate to um, uh, Dinosaurus's. Where's it at? Son of a bitch. Where's? It? Oh, it is. It's right here. It's right here. Go, go, go! Donate to the Kickstarter for nothing for something special. Dinosaurus's new book. It's gonna be. It's literally done tonight. I did say Lost Boys Press, Ashley, and like, don't tell Dina I do this, but I do this a lot. It's been too late. Like, it's literally the last night of uh, the Kickstarter for Dinosaurus's new book. Uh, something special. And I know, um, yes, I know. And um, I know none of you are probably going to go donate to the Kickstarter for Dinosaurus's new book, something special, but please do. Um, I, I, because I care and I want it to, I want my sprayed edges. That's what I'm saying. And yes, I am super manic, okay? Because there's literally nobody else in this room. And I have to like, there's, uh, I have to fill this with personality. That's all I have. This show started with me strumming a gun and pretending to be Michael Gross. Okay? I'm just doing what I can with what I got. Uh, but anyway, yes, yeah, someone has to know the physiology and biology and psychology of underground worm monsters that turn into dinosaur chickens that turn into fire farting pterodactyls. Uh, somebody has to know. And that's me. And again, I have like, that's where uh, the Stampede Entertainment site. Steve is still fucking answering questions. He was answering questions um, for fans on April 4th. That was the last. I just saw questions that he was answering uh, on there. So if you have any questions about Tremors, 
I mean, you can ask me if you want. I'll probably get to you quicker. But Steve's got the answers, too. He's still answering. And I love that so much. Um, and I'm pretty sure Steve's in the middle of writing a book, too. He just said something about that. Uh, so, like, yeah, of course I know that. Did you know that Asp Blasters are also like salmon? And they only have a single egg in them, and then they spawn, and then they die? And Reba is the best. Uh, Reba also should have been recast in... Tremor 7, and she should have been in that movie. She should, uh, although I do love Reba, and I want Reba back. I want you back! Um, it's not a Reba song. Um, <laughs> but yeah, go check out Stampede what's hyphen entertainment.com slash FAQ fact. Um, and yeah, uh, go Reba. And I just saw Zach Willie just is he's taught actually Reba is in Oklahoma right now accepting a lifetime achievement award. Uh, I just saw Zach Willie is is over there our good buddy um and he's talking to Reba and he's he, he I think he's telling her about Tremor Fest. He's doing what he can with what he got on that. But it's again it's like getting Kevin Bacon there. You can tell him but like is she fucking Reba is she going to show up? I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> let's get Finn Carter. Let's aim. Let's. I hate saying it like that. Let's just aim elsewhere. Okay. Um, <laughs> stop saying remakes, people. Restarts. We don't need Reba in a remake. We need Reba in a sequel. That's it. Uh, anyway, so Baby Fark McGee's act and these intergalactic quality gifts and Imgur and just fucking. You know what? Hey, I'm going to make gifts and. Um, I'm going to just put them all the way out there. And he did it. Uh, he did. Cause he originally his first one that he did wasn't even a specific like OC, like uh, tremors one dump. It was just like, these are things from tremors that I like or, that are Burt Gummer affiliated. And I like these and here's my um, dump of that. And then he did one that was just tremors one. And then the next year, April 14th, he did one that was tremors two. And then the next April 14th, he did one that was tremors three. And then that is when <gasps> bum, 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 Shrieker Island happened. And we don't have to discuss what happens uh, at the end of Shrieker Island. I'll pull up. Reba would be cool. William, Reba would be cool. Um, but at the end of Shrieker Island, Tremor 7, Shrieker Island, they're, they're, and actually in the movie itself, uh, and I'll, I'll do it, and this counts as olive time, um, where there's because there's Richard Brake. Richard Brake is the bad guy in it, and he's like nuts. And I love him. I wish they hadn't killed that character off. And that's not even a spoiler because he's like the bad guy. But he's like that guy was so fucking crazy. But like he's he brought all these people to the island and everybody's dying. And then they bring in like Burt Gummer and and the 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 scientist dude is like, I'm telling you, Bill, we shouldn't have hatched these things. It, uh, these juice graboids, they've gone all wrong. And then the Richard Briggs is like, uh, hold on. Oh, I got hats for this because he wears this hat. I got. I'm gonna do it back and forth. Oh, it's fine. It's a. Uh, it's you know. I don't care. I'm gonna juice the graboid. You know, we should have listened to Bert Gummer. Bert Gummer knew what he was talking about. He's a paranoid militant with more guns and ammo than anyone can handle. You know, there's actually a Bert Gummer day. Like Labor Day or Memorial Day. He's not just a superhero in some circles. He's a legend. And it's so fucking cool. Like they literally name drop Burt Gummer Day in the movie. And as I just found out and was telling you about um, uh, Don Michael Paul. Why did my brain ooh, just go bye bye um, sometimes? Uh, Don Michael Paul put that in the script because he's, you know, a fan. And I was telling Baby Fark today when I was messaging, I was like, I think Don might have been an imager user. <laughs> like, I'm not sure. Because it's been going on that long. Like, it was going on, like, that, like, four years before 2020. And then, hey, okay, let's use it and put it in the movie. Um, oh, I will answer that question in a second. Um, and... And it's dope. And then the movie happens and stuff happens in the movie. And then at the end of the movie, it says, celebrate Burt Gummer Day on April 14th and pay your taxes. Which 
I did message Don that, and I was like, was that a you joke? Because, like, Burt Gummer doesn't have to pay his taxes anymore, according to you in Tremor 6. He doesn't have to pay federal taxes because Nevada doesn't have state taxes. A uh, very specific line that I always like in Tremor 6. Um, and, yeah, and then celebrate Burt Gummer Day, April 14th. Uh, and then Baby Fark's creation was put uh, into canon, into the world, which is amazing. And that's and I, and it has to be said, like, so I would say that Baby Fark actually has two claims of fame. One of them over here is Burt Gummer Day, and that's why we're here. But then the other one is the intergalactic quality GIF format, which if you don't know what that is, like, that is Imgur. Like, you, like, like that, that is that world, man. And that is why, like, everybody's always trying to not even one-up each other, but they're all trying to hold each other to their best of just, like, yeah, we have to, like, let's. OC, it's always original content, which is something that I love. Like, reposts are fine if it's like, hey, it's been a long time. But, like, original content. Always trying to put out something new, even if, like, it's fucking stupid. I don't know. That's And I love that. That's fucking, like, put it out there. The world's always changing. Keep trying. Keep one-upping up, yourself. Um, and, yeah, so we got Burt Grummer Day for Baby Fark, and then we got uh, Intergalactic Quality Gifts, and, like, that is... That is what that man's name will forever be hold to, um, and I know I know their real name. I'm not going to say it uh, because I respect them too much. But uh, wherever you are, um, I was going to do an acronym too, but it's fine. But uh, baby fark, wherever you are, I fucking love you, bro. Um, and then so that that was the canonization. Oh my god, why is my dad calling me right now? Jesus Christ! Hold on, hold on. I'm going to answer. One second. One second. We'll find out what this is. Hello? Can I come over? Uh, sure. We're yeah. in Otter Creek right now. Okay. Happy's got the boys. Yeah. Yeah. You can come tonight. Okay. Okay. I love you, Sean Charles. Love you too. Okay, Bubba. <laughs> bye bye. Um, so we'll be getting an interruption sooner or later here on that. Um, that'll be interesting. We'll find out what happens when that happens. Um, and so, yeah, go baby Fark. And I'm going to answer. I got two questions here. I got to answer because I'm always doing that. Um, <clears throat> do I think that SS Wilson's son, Matt Wilson will show up for Tremors Fest? I'd like to get his autograph. I don't know. Uh, Matt lives in Chicago, which is how I met him and knew him. And I always like to, this is my one, like, uh, Matt Wilson was the first ever, uh, signature in my seeking perfection book thank you for coming to the reading because i was the only fucking tremors fan who actually came to the reading of Stephen brent's uh, new script blank slate that matt put together uh i would love for matt to be there matt's one that actually out of everybody like before don michael paul and michael gross and people like that matt is one that i would love to get onto this show uh <laughs> because He's literally seen Tremors since he was five years old. Um, why is my thing yelling at me? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh, I got to do. Okay, hold on. Oopsie. I forgot to do that. Uh-oh. I have to delete some things. One second. One second, people. Uh, I hope this isn't killing anything right now. Delete. Okay. Deleted. Okay, cool. Cool. All right, now we're good. Now we're good. I don't think ever press F in chat if you're still here. Sorry, that's just free. It just told me I had to free up space to continue, so I just had a bit of a panic attack. Um, but we're good. I cleared space, so we should be good now. Um, I'm gonna do this too. There we go. Okay, we're all clear. Um, I would love Matt. I would love Matt to go to Tremors Fest. Um, because he's a really interesting guy. Uh, like really like he's oh man uh i'm I, can't, I would say now i'm actually good friends with him ever since then it's been like two years now um and i would love i you know what i'll actually i should reach out to him i will do that personally after this and i will reach out to matt and ask him uh, about that um and then what happened to that mark oh wow okay chris don't fuck with me like that okay we <laughs> Chris is like, whoo, now that there's more space, I can fit into the chat. Sure. Okay. Just for that, I'm going to put off telling the crazy theory that I liked this week, which is really good. 
but that's not true. I'm going to tell the Mark Wahlberg story here. So this was more funny than anything. And it's not really about Mark Wahlberg. So we were, we did our dancing. We did my uh, dancing with the stars thing, which went pretty fun and was awesome. Although I mentally broke down and had several problems with my life and self-esteem and who I am. Um, oh my God, everybody's effing in the chat. This is so great. Um, but we went and we did it, and uh, I got all tens. I gotta say that I got a perfect score. Me and Kenzie, fucking, because Kenzie rocks. And um, we went to the after party, and there was this DJ there, and who ended up being not a great DJ. I was not a fan of this guy because he did not take requests. He was like DJ requests in fucking the goods. Where like you, you was like, I want this song. He's like, Yeah, okay. Plays completely opposite song. It's like, then what the. F- to fucking fuck you man and uh at the end of the night he like he had apparently been hitting on caitlin and my friend cheyenne and she he had been hitting on her like all night or whatever and i didn't know because i was focused on dancing with my friends and i did not care that i was on drugs for <laughs> i don't that's f- fuck you guys i don't care uh because it was fun and we were all having a good time um and he was hitting on, on our friend Cheyenne, and this, this is like two o'clock at night, and we're everybody's like leaving, and we're going out, and <laughs> fucking this guy comes up, and he starts like talking to us, and apparently he was like talking to Cheyenne or hitting on her like this, and like I said, I didn't have any contact, so I wasn't aware I was coming in into this conversation, and he starts talking. And he's like, you know, a lot of people think I look like Mark Wahlberg. And I'm just like, I mean, sure. He kind of looked, I wouldn't even say trailer trashy, but he just looked rednecky, uh, uh, downtown rednecky. How about that? That's, yeah. Like a downtown uh, big city redneck. That's my best opinion of what that guy was called. His name was DJ Todd, which... Or DJ Troy, not DJ, yeah, DJ Troy. Or Troy, T- something, something stupid like that. And he's like, yeah, you know, everybody thinks I look like Mark Wahlberg. And it was like, okay, yeah, sure. And he started telling this story about how, like, he was in some, I think he was in Boston. And he's like, yeah, you know, uh, people thought I looked like Mark Wahlberg. But then, like, I was at this bar. And then Donnie Wahlberg walked in. And him and I were, like, talking. And it was all cool. And, like, Donnie Wahlberg's the best. And dope, dude. Blah, 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 blah. And there's just people. And I, it was just the dumbest fucking conversation, like, ever. And <laughs> we had actually, me and Caitlin and Cheyenne and Zach had actually been having a conversation in the car before we showed up where we were talking about the R word. Like, we don't say i'm just gonna say we just we don't use retard as a derogatory term anymore that's not we just don't do that that's where let's use other words like that's a that we've evolved we've got other words we can use just like we don't use fag and the n-word we just don't use these things there's better words to use and zach was telling us he's like yeah you know there's this thing down here in Davenport where people will just drop that. They will drop that hard R and you're just like, Ooh, okay, excuse me. I'm going to back away now. I'm not okay. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know who you are. I appreciate that. I don't need to have a conversation with you anymore. And we're talking to this guy with fucking. And, and the thing is, is he's talking about like, Oh, I look like Mark Wahlberg and I'm talking to Donnie Wahlberg. And the whole time I was thinking, it's like, Motherfucker, you look like Donnie Wahlberg. Like, you don't look like Mark Wahlberg. You look like Donnie. You look like the lesser of these two people. And, like, I don't know what the... To whoever was telling you that was obviously high or something. And he's talking, and he's telling us his story. And then all of a sudden, he drops the hard R-bomb. And I'm not... That one, I'm not even going to repeat how he did it. It's just like... Just fucking all these... And it was just like, whoa! Holy shit! And we all like looked at each other because it's like we were just having this conversation, dude. Really? Okay. Um. Anyway, we're gonna go now. Goodbye. <laughs> like it was a that was an immediate out on the conversation. Just like, yep. Um, this was interesting. You suck. Bye. I hope I don't meet you again. 
So that's my Mark. It's not even really a Mark Wahlberg story. It was just something I was thinking of because somebody said Mark Wahlberg. Um, and um, people have already commented here in the chat. So I just got to say, uh, saw that clip of you dance. Thank you. And congrats, Levi. Dancing in front of others is very intimidating. And he did it and did it really well, it sounds like. Yeah, there's actually multiple. Actually, the, the professional video went up uh, last week. And it looked really good. <laughs> like I said, I was super duper proud of it. It was terrifying. I'm, I'm going to get into this later, uh, what my mindset was and why I got fucked up by it. Not the dancing. Like, I can't. The dancing was fine. Like that ended up being okay. And I could even do that dance for you right now. And it was dope. Like we fucking Kenzie and I like nailed that shit, man. Like it was awesome. And Edwin, you haven't even seen the one, the professional one yet. Cause I got to upload that to my YouTube channel. Um, Cause it was so good. Like it was just like fucking boom baller, man. Um, absolutely. It's like so good. I can't wait to do it again next year. Uh, I really want to do two dances next year. I want to do uh, a contestant dance because I started like way late. I did not get as much time as everybody else. I would love to do a contestant dance and I want to do a professional dance, which is me dancing with somebody else as a good dancer. Um, but it was dope. It was, yeah, it was fucking awesome. Um, so, booyah! Um, but to go back to the original subject of Burt Gummer Day, <laughs> So Burt Gummer Day happened, <clears throat> like happened, happened, and Baby Fark McGee's ex, um, like I said, had four years of doing OC dumps, and then all of a sudden Universal is like, "Hey, we're gonna use this. This is ours now." And um, and that would be my one. It's always been my one qualm with that is that like, okay, say so, hey, you know, hey, you have the credits of a movie, and if you've watched, uh. My movie, the movie that we we all made, I put a bunch of people in the credits. It is super duper easy to just write names into the credits. Who cares? Like, it's not, they're just literally words there. And you know what? Every person that you write is a person that feels better that their name was included. And I always think that it's such a shame that Baby Fark McGee's axe's name isn't in the credits. And I mean that it can, they don't even have to list their real name. It can just be, Thank you to Baby Fark McGee's act of imager for Burt Gummer Day. Like, that's it. And that's always my one. Like, if I talk to Don, that would be my one. Like, I'm not going to, that's not a, a text thing. That's a real life. Like, hey, why didn't you guys include that? Is there something legal going on there for that? Because that's my one, like, ugh, what are you doing? And um, <sighs> that happens. Uh, Baby Fark gets, like, gets Burt Gummer Day, man. And fucking. It is that's so cool. And, and there's it's linked at the bottom uh, of this YouTube video the story from Baby Fark McGee's ex's uh, perspective. How cool it was to see that! Like to be like, oh my god, my um, the thing that I've spent the last four years just doing because it was fun. Like that's what I love about Baby Fark. It's just like. They do the OC and they do the intergalactic quality and they do the Burt Gummer Day just because it's fun and they love doing it and they think it's awesome. That's it, man. They're not, it's not about credit. It's not about glory. It's just about like, this is fun. I fucking love this. And even to the point where when you read the story, what I just said about how they're not credited doesn't affect them. If Burt Gummer Day is in there, somebody said it, that's awesome. Like, that's so cool. Um. Oh my God! I gotta. I'm gonna read that. Okay, and actually, I just, I am gonna read that right now because that's a really. Uh, Zilla film said I've said this in a previous comment, but in the fam film I'm making, the graboids kill Universal's big money makers one by one. But trust me, they ain't getting Michael Myers for many reasons. That's hilarious. I fucking love that. And then of course, what uh, Ben said for fucks for real, just give credit where credit is due. Like it's pretty because it's easy. And I'm pretty sure all of you guys were in the credit for my movie. So you understand what I mean when I say just like, just put it in there. Who cares? Really simple thing just to make people feel better. Just fucking do it. Um, and, uh, but Baby Fark didn't, it didn't matter. Like I said, the fact that Burt Gummer Day was there, awesome. Like, fuck. And uh, I agree. Like, that would be, poof, 
Booyah. Bravo and keep it up. Um, so that happened, and I don't even think that year... I think they were just like so overjoyed. I actually, I'm, I know this. They were so overjoyed that uh, somebody had like that Universal. Why did I say somebody? That Universal had put Burt Gummer Day in the movie. That they didn't do an OC dump. They were just like, um, uh, oh my god fucking here's Burt Gummer Day it's in the movie and I think they just they didn't do repeats but they just kind of did little off and on ones they didn't do full uh movie OC dumps um and then that's where like so then that was my experience of it where so then I watched Tremor 7 and I saw what happened and then I saw this Burt Gummer Day thing and I was like oh whoa what the what, what the fuck is this who is oh my god whoa so this is like a person who like started this that is fucking Dope, dude. Uh, became friends with him on Imager, and it was just like fucking baby, baby, fucking keys act uh, to the point where I would always be like, that you didn't get credited. Like I know it's awesome and I know it's dope, but you should have been credited for that because I was pissed about that other thing that happened at the end of Tremor Seven, uh, which Ben's here, so I'm not gonna say it. That thing that happened at the end of Tremor Seven, but we all know what it is. Um, and it was just like. Dude, but no, you're like this is so great. You really do deserve to be credited for this. Uh, to the point where then, like, I got really mad at Universal lots of times, um, especially leading up to then the next year's Burt Gummer Day in 2022, uh, where it was like, okay, look, fuckers, <laughs> look, you pieces of shit. <laughs> um, credit him. You have to at least credit him for making this some way you, you can't do it in the movie because the movie's already done but you have to credit this man for making this when i google what burt gummer day is it should be a lot easier to find out that baby fark mcgee's axe did it not just direct me to tremor seven because that's that's no if i look up and you can do it now please feel free to do it now i cannot look up burt gummer day google it baby fark mcgee's axe is the first is the first uh, uh, pop up, uh, which it should be. And um, oh, and hey, I'll say goodbye to. Have a good night, Zilla Fam Studio. I'm sorry to leave so soon, but it's my dad's birthday, and I'm working on the few minutes of the fan film before heading to Orlando. So thanks for being a Tremors fan. Thank you too, buddy. Um, <laughs> it's my mom's birthday today, which I should have said happy birthday to my mom. She's the one that got me this microphone up here, up there. That microphone. Uh, she's the one that. Decided to rent Tremors 2 from the the gas station rental place. Thank you, my mom. It's your birthday. I wanted to talk about it later. Oh, I will talk about it later. Because it's my mom's birthday today. And then on April 14th, it's Burt Gummer Day. And then on April 15th, it's my dad's birthday. I'm just fucking swamped, bro. Fucking swamped. Um, <laughs> and so anyway, I got like, I would get mad at Universal. Because it's, and you know what? It's not even about getting mad at Universal social media person. It's just like, hey, <clears throat> you're a billion dollar corporation. Take a little time to like thank the people that got you here. Not that hard, right? To the point where eventually Universal credited Baby Fark McGee's ex. And it was like, fuck yeah. Like they did a Facebook post about it and they tweeted about it. And it was like, fuck yes. Like actually saying Baby Fark. Uh, of Imger, Baby Fark McGee's ex, and here's the link to the story about it, and here's them, they made it. And it's like, good! Thank you! That's great! I'm not done yet. <laughs> and then, so then, then, then when Zorin did their kill counts, that was one thing that I was always messaging Zorin, leading up to the Tremor 7 one, was like, please, for the love of God, fucking put Baby Fark McGee's ex on screen, like, write that, like, do it up, like, he needs to be credited, please, and thank you, and fucking Zoran did it, too, like, that's where, <laughs> and I actually, I got it, did you know there's actually a book on day? I did! Started seven years, but it started, it's April 14th, started by Baby Fark McGee's act of Imager over seven years ago, and it was like, yeah, that's my Zor boy, way to go, Zoki! Um, so fuck yeah that was awesome um because again it, like you can't make that and do all that and then he's the baby fark's an incredibly humble person it's like 
I don't care. I'm going to not be humble. I'm for you. I'm going to be very aggressive for you because I know you're not going to. Uh, I was like, yeah. and then there was one more person. And in fact, the most important person in my eyes when it comes to this, um, to the point where then last year, when I struck up a conversation with Michael Gross, it was like, okay, look, I'm talking to you. We're friends, we're buddies and stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to pull in my favor. I haven't done any, all I did was send you a movie and now we're talking and, um, oh, thank you for loving Tremors, Osman. Osman Oswald or, or Waldo. <clears throat> and I was like, hey, Michael, it's coming up for a cover day here. I just got to say, you know, like it would mean the world, not to me, but to baby Fark McGee's ex, if you actually like said their name, like what it was. And here's the link to the story. If you want to write something, <clears throat> I'll send it to them. Let me know. Please and thank you. Because obviously, he likes Burt Gummer. <laughs> he likes the character of Burt Gummer to the point of starting an entire holiday. So, like, let's, like, can you, like, help me out and credit him and give him some love? And boom! Michael did it! Fucking Michael did it. And if you want to, you can find out Baby Fark McGee's actual real name. Go to uh, Michael Gross's page and, and look it up. Because uh, that was, he said his full name there. And it was just like, boom! Fuck yeah! Michael Gross actually acknowledged the guy. It made me so happy. And I was like, my job is partially done. And I, cause I always tell baby Fark that where it's like, no, I don't, I'm not stopping. You need to be credited. I, um, I always end up like upping it or it's like, you need to be credited. You need to be paid for making gifts. You need to be making movies. Like I'm always just upping it because I love the guy. Um, and here's a great question. What is the traditional way to celebrate Burt Gummer day? I got it. Hold on. I'm working on it. For the audio only listeners, why are you only listening on audio? That's boring. Come on. What's wrong with you? This is a very visual podcast. If you hadn't figured that out by now. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you how to celebrate Burt Gummer Day by stalling. You have to stall a lot. It's going to be, there's going to be some stalling. Did, did you, did, it's like a car that doesn't run. It's stalling. Hold on, where's that? Oh my god, there's a, oh, there's a, is that a button? Or is that the button I need? Okay, I cannot see in these aviators. I'm blind! Where's that? Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah, Edwin's right. Stay in your house and give backup, backup generators to your friends and neighbors. All right. You want to celebrate my day? Well, here's the thing. First of all, you need to stop paying your taxes. <laughs> because if you think I pay taxes, you're not paying any fucking attention. Secondly, you need to go to Imgur, get yourself an Imgur account, and go celebrate it the way it started and was meant to be celebrated. Go fucking make some gifts, put some pictures, make a meme, do some OC. What? That sounds like Don Knotts. That's what I keep getting. That's my thing here. If you want to celebrate Burt Gummer Day, you celebrate it by however the fuck you want. That's really, that is the Burt Gummer way. Um, the Burt Gummer way is not voting for anybody because I, why the fuck would I participate? The Trump and Biden are both dog shit. Um, that's, that's my opinion. I am going to vote for Burt Gummer. Vote Burt, write Burt Gummer's name for 2024 president. And you know what? I'm not even going to show up. I won't. I'll just be like, you voted for me? That's your fault. Bye-bye. Also, I think because of the mustache, I keep wanting to do Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. <laughs> I'm Burt <Gummer. laughs> Stay classy, Perfection Nevada. Um, but if you want to celebrate Burt Gummer Day, do it however the hell you want. Eat an MRE. Have some cactus fully despined with a shot of Tabasco. Uh, you know, just go out. Maybe find a silver mine. Uh, you know, do something. I just, I'm now I'm stuck in Ron Burgundy land. <laughs> now I'm just like the must. I keep because I keep looking at the mustache and I'm just like, I'm Burgundy. 
I can play the Yaz flute. Oh, don't mind if I do. Cannonball! And I'm just stuck here now. I'm fucking... No, I'm just stuck. And you know what? That deserves an olive because I'm doing an impression on top of an impression. That's two olive. Uh, two little ball. And I, uh, oh, my, my. But really, I would say, um, I, I got to read it. I got to read it, Chris. Cause it, look, I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Yes. I have uh, many leather-bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. <sighs> Look, I'm going to put something out there, and you can set it down and pick it up. You have an absolutely breathtaking Heine. Wait, no, come, come back, come back! I want to be inside you. I want to be inside you. Um, and yes, have I tried the olive with the garlic and blue cheese? Fucking yes, I have. You can stuff an olive with anything you want, and it's delicious. And just as an aside, if somebody tells me I will eat a jalapeno, I brought jalapenos up. I don't know what the jalapeno would warrant. In terms of this show, because I feel like the olive is baseline, and then the pickle is like it bringing it up a little bit, but then the jalapeno is like I don't know what. What do you think, chat? Somebody tell me what does the like if you've watched this show enough. What is something that is just like oh my god, I can't believe Levi did it. You need to eat a jalapeno, uh, and we'll we'll discuss that. Um, so you guys can make me eat a jalapeno. It's the Frito Bandit. Uh, good, good one, TikTok person. <clears throat> so anyway, like I, I would really say, if you really want to celebrate Burt Gummer Day, the way it was started and intended, create an Imgur account and go over there on April fourteenth, and you will see the biggest party of fucking Tremors fans you have ever seen in your life. I mean, holy shit! Like they just go nuts. Like, that is the fucking time of the year that Imgur fans are like, Burgummer, motherfucker! And it's not just Burgummer. Like, they go all out. There's all different ones, but that the focus is Burgummer, um, which is dope, and I love it. So that that would be mine. Like, put on the movies, and that can include five, six, and seven. I, actually, I just <clears throat> I just finished a binge of, uh, I did the, the first three movies. I didn't watch Tremors 4 because I just I just did the first three movies and then I did Tremors the series and we just finished it like an hour and 12 minutes ago. Um, and then now I get to watch Tremors 4. Oh, fuck yes. That's why you saved that one. Um, <laughs> fuck yes. Uh, sorry, now I'm thinking about it. I get to watch Tremors 4 because it's my favorite movie. Um, so put on, you know, put on a binge of the Tremors movies or the Tremors TV show. Um, again, I would recommend the Tremors TV show. I think it's better for like Burt Gummeriness of that. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It's however you want to celebrate. They said, go make some memes. Chris, you were really loving the, um, uh, excuse me, the Burt Gummer on a shrieker thing. I don't know, make something like that. It's easy. Um, if you don't own the tin of Tremors, that is a jalapeno. Define tin of Tremors, William. Because if it's the lunchbox, I gotta get the lunchbox, and I don't own it yet. I do need to. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, I was at Goodwill. Um, I was at Goodwill a couple weeks ago, and they had Tremors one, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh my god! Um, and I bought it. I know I didn't need it, but I bought it. It was three dollars. Um, <laughs> wow! <And> I, <laughs> oh, the boys—they're asleep. Oh, I was kind of hoping they would like come up here. Are they? If they're not, oh, <clears throat> if they're not asleep, babe, you can tell them to come up here. Like, are they on the couch or? Because I didn't set the bed down. Um, no worries, uh, Edwin. Did before you leave, Edwin? Did I properly explain where Burt Gummer Day comes from? Because. 
that was kind of the point of this. Uh, and and you know what, Edmund, you'll have to listen back. I'm going to make you because there's actually something really cool that Dot Michael Paul texted me that I'm not going to. That uh, if you're on Facebook, you know what it is. Aha, suck it. Uh, but oh my god, now I'm just really worried about the boys. Like, are they? I did. I wanted to see them, and I wanted them to come up for the show because they never interrupt me. Because I'm like, I usually try to schedule this where they can't interrupt me. And I'm like, damn it! I love you guys. Hold up, maybe they'll say something. Can can you hear me? I don't, I don't know. Hello. Shush. Oh. Okay. Oh, I just have to shush now. Did they fall asleep? Yes. Which ones are here? Sunday's hotel. Okay. Is that did you put the bed down? Yes. Okay. They're really asleep? Yeah, they're exhausted. Holy shit. Oh basketball? Yeah. Oh, I like that. I I'm sorry. I love you. Um, that's adorable. That is a glimpse of my life. Um, and yes, uh, I got, I can't, I cannot look at myself with this shit on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so weird. Um, and yeah, um, scouring Goodwill for Tremors VHSs and deep. I'm sorry. I got very distracted by that. I like being distracted on this show. That's kind of like my MO. Uh, as Chris was telling me, it's always a fun, chaotic time. Uh, and William's been scouring Goodwill and thrift stores for Tremors VHSs and DVDs. And, oh, the original Tremors in a cool steel tin. Do Okay, so is that, you know what? Okay. If you don't own the tin of Tremors, that is a jalapeno. All right. All right. You know what? I mean, I do this for the fans uh, because there's few of you, and I love you all. Oh, my God. I'm going to, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm going to try to get a little one here. Here we go. It's this is from the jalapeno jar too. Jalapeno peppers. Oh my god! Here we go. Oh, oh shit! Oh my god! If you're only watching this on audio, you are missing. Oh, oh my god! It's so hot. Well, now my man canker sore hurt. This is fine. This is this is consequences. This is this is this. I set it up, and this is oh baby, this is improv. You know, you set it up, you set the pins up, and um and um you take it, you just take it, you commit to it, and it's fine. It's fine. Like you said, oh the canker, the canker and the burn. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. So I do not have tremors on a, on a steel tin. Fuck you, William. <laughs> Fuck a bunch of you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I have to say, okay, on that note, I have had uh, this tremors attack pack since, let's see, hold on. When was this released? 2005. Holy shit, that actually makes a lot of sense. This has been, yeah, this is from 2005. And I did get Gladys to sign it. Gladys signed that one. Um, I don't know why. It's just, she's not even in these, but it was like, I don't care. That's the difference between me and Zach. Where it's like, I don't care if you're like not related to it. Sign it. Let's have fun. But I have had the, the Tremors Attack Pack for 20 years. Because, the, I mean, this is all you needed for the longest time. And it's all you really need besides the TV show. Um, Cause it's just so fucking good. Although I was looking at it. Sorry. That's um. have a good night, Ben. Okay. You just, you were, you were waiting. Ben was waiting for the, had to stick around long enough to watch you eat the jalapeno, but now I'm turning it into a pumpkin. Good night. Love you, Ben. <laughs> Love your artwork. Oh, oh, it's hidden back here. <laughs> Uh, I love this artwork. Val and Earl. 
And I can't wait to see the rest of your porn comic, Brent, whatever that looks like. Whew. Oh, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, I have to take this off. Like I said, um, fill me. Some dude on TikTok wants me to fill them with my knowledge. If you want to want me to fill you with your my knowledge, then you need to come to the YouTube. Oh, go to the Trevor Sockers YouTube channel. And I'll fill you with the knowledge. So much knowledge. Uh, I kind of want to eat another jalapeno. Does that make sense? I don't think I think I need to eat a pickle now. <laughs> um, happy Burt Gummer Day to you. Happy Burt Gummer Day to all of us. <laughs> oh, the pickle help. Okay. That was smart. I'm glad I brought pickle. Mm. Oh, that helped. It was smart. Now I found a new combo. Feel the burn of the jalapeno. Work it with a pickle. Smart. Smart. Mm. Mm. That's so good. Um, <laughs> I was almost done with my original topic thought, but it's fine. That was so great. I love the veer off on that. While I'm paused here and everybody's leaving, I'm going to screw the TikTok people over because, frankly, I like doing that. Um, there is there's a video on the Trevor Sagas TikTok right now that's at like 50,000 views. That's just about Burt Gummer Day. So I wonder how many of those people are going to come over to tell me to die uh, <laughs> and that I need Jesus and shit like that, which is always fun and interesting. Um, and uh, so... Burt Grummer Day happened. Uh, they said, I can't, I can't credit Baby Fark McGee's ex enough because it's like one of those things where uh, I love what they did with Burt Grummer Day because they proved, hey, it doesn't matter if you're just a fan. Do you care about something a lot? Then your just a fanness can mean anything. You can make that. You can create that world. Like just your belief. And that's my, I'm not a religious person, but I love belief. And I think that belief does so much. And I actually have it literally written here that hope and love will win. <laughs> and that was partially because I, when I was listening to Dig Down, the song that I opened this with, like that was like, that's the several lines in it are just, you know, hope like and love will win. Like they're incredibly valuable traits that we have as people. As human beings, as 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 animals, as anything, I think that I think I think dogs hope and cats hope and cows hope and bacteria hopes and plants hope and, and like that's you're always hoping to go up. You're reaching to the sun. You hope that tomorrow the sun comes out. You hope because you don't know if it will. You know we the, <laughs> we we could have easily been raptured. I think that's absolutely insane to think, but we could have easily been raptured when the sun disappeared, but we weren't. Um. And oh, actually, I, f I forgot. There were two things here. I wanted to, oh, that's what I was missing when I was coming back to that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to pull. Like, sorry. The boys walked in and were like, wow, Levi's really loud. And then fell asleep. I just, that's, I get a lot of hope from my boys. Like, that's, they're the reason that I won't show, I will not show them Tremor 7 until something is, like, done about it. Until there's a Tremor's, like, another Tremors with Michael Gross. And then I'll be like, cool, we can watch Tremor 7 now. That's fine, because I don't want you to see what happens there, because I think that was just a disgrace, and you guys love Tremors so much, I don't want you to end on that. Um, and then even more to that note, I love Chris Chris and Colin. You know, They've got three episodes left to go in the TV show, and sad to watch them, because then it's over. And I feel that. That is such a, like... Oh, I'm really glad that you guys watched the, the movies and then went back to the TV show because that palate cleanse is necessary when it comes to that. And I just think that it's so cool that Baby Fark went, hey, I want, this is, I, I'm going to do that. And he didn't think anybody was going to fucking notice. He's just like, I'm going to make this. I'm excited and I love this. I'm going to do this. And that's where I say, when I'm making my movies, I don't really give a shit to be in 
universal movies. I think somebody asked me once, do you want to be, who would you be a character? Would you play in like a stampede movie or a universal? It's like, no, I don't really want, I, man, I would love to give me that puppet to operate and shit. <laughs> Fucking, I will throw pumpkins all day long, but there are better people than that. I don't need to be in it. I, I'm there to help. I'm there to remember stuff that had happened. And I'll be like, Hey, remember that book over here? Did anybody else read this? We should maybe use this. Um, but other than that, there's better people than me that when it comes to that, what I can do is I can make movies and I can make a podcast and I can be like, hey, here's some cool things that you don't know about Tremors. And you know what? You can do it too. Like that's where Zilla Films, I was making a joke about Tremors take Orlando or whatever, but it's definitely a like, hey, it doesn't really matter. Like, guess what? You made, you're making a Tremors movie. Like, Oh, we're not smashing pumpkins. We're throwing pumpkins, TikTok person. That's what we do in, in Tremors movies. We throw pumpkins and Libby's pumpkin pie mix and salsas and and we make the goo and then the intestines and the pantyhose and then we throw it and it's gross and it's awesome. And I want everyone to make Tremors films. Like, William, I would love to see your take on a Tremors film. I don't care what it is. like, And I don't care how good it is. Like, it's You're making it. That's something. You're putting it out in the world. You're being creative. What is my, sorry, TikTok person. What is my favorite Tremors movie? Tremors 4, The Legend Begins. Because <laughs> fucking is the best Tremors movie. And then, um, but Tremors the series. You asked favorite Tremors movie. Tremors the series, though, just like edges it out. Just that little bit more. Like, And I have to say it's a movie versus a TV show. But Tremors the series is my favorite. But Tremors for The Legend Begins is my favorite tr- movie. It just fucking is. It just fucking is. Um, and it, like I said, I just want everyone to make Tremors movies. And to, the, <clears throat> to this point, okay, so Chris is here. And I got to call Chris out because I love Chris on this. It's not even calling you out. This is a great like point to make on Chris's crazy theories. Because uh, he's saying, agreed, the TV show is a great palate cleanser. There's so much fun. Um just so much fun to the point where I love the TV show so much that I need to do a, um, uh, I need to redo my retrospective commentary episodes. I want to do one for every single Tremors episode to the point where then we were watching the Caitlin and I were just watching the one, uh, today, tonight with, uh, lady Burt Gummer at the sounds of silence and the bugs. And she's like, hey, anytime you want to do uh, that episode where we, you and I talk about this episode, let me know. I like, I really want to do it. And I'm like, oh, I was actually doing an episode of the show tonight on Burka. But I'm, yeah, oh my God. Yes, I would love to because that's her favorite episode. Um, and Kaniki over here just said, Tremors 2 is my favorite of all. And I love that. Like, <clears throat> there are, and I will, I will defend this that Tremors 1 as a movie is a perfect movie and it can be taught in film school and it should be taught in film school alongside the Godfather. Actually, I'll, I was going to say the God, it sh- it's a perfect f- film that should be taught along Jaws and Jurassic Park and the Godfather and Pacific Rim. Why was he going to say Pacific? Because Pacific Rim is a fucking perfect movie too. Fuck yeah, it is. Um, why did he, sorry. Now I'm trying to think of a oh Oppenheimer. There we go. The Godfather and Opp- I was trying to Interstellar. There we go. Because Interstellar is an amazing movie too. Um, but it should be taught as a this is a perfect film. No fat beginning to end. Every single character is in it. And Back to the Future. Thank you, Anthony. Oh my god. Oh my god. I missed you, Anthony. Uh, <laughs> forgot. Oh my god. Forgot. Fucking Anthony's making a goddamn movie, too. It's not even a Tremors movie. Although, on that point, I'd love to see Anthony's Tremors movie. I don't care if you're never going to get to 20,000 fucking followers. You don't need 20,000 fucking followers. Just make a goddamn Tremors movie. Um, like That's where I got four sequels in the bay um, of ones that I want to do. Um, and I want to I want to talk about. But it's just like, I just want everyone to make their Tremors movie. Because it should, like... It's something. I don't know. Like that's your like <sighs> make. I'm trying to. It's creativity. I think is what it is. Where it's like we're we're so uh, capitalized and medialized, and I'm making up words because I'm really I like making up words that don't mean anything. That we think that the only things that matter are when my Bluetooth is on. <laughs> 
that's not what I was thinking of, are the only things that matter is when I can see it on a big screen. And that's cool. And that is, that is, it's just like to go off of Baby Farks thing. It is cool to see that, see your creation up there alongside Reba and Kevin Bacon and stuff like that. But it does not diminish how awesome it is to create something at all. Like that's where like the, like Dina's book and, and Daniel's book. And again, that's, you're only like, just cause you're here even like making comics, like these things, like it doesn't matter. Like this is making something like baby Fark McGee's axes, Burt Gummer day is just as creative as an endeavor as making any tremors movie. Um, and hold on. And April 12th, which is almost over, is my 32nd birthday and two days before Burt Kummer Day. Happy birthday, Kaniki. I just got to say that. Happy birthday to this person. I hate saying happy birthday to people because that's just everybody's got a birthday. I think happy birthday is all the time. But happy birthday to you, Kaniki. I'm not saying your name right. Uh, also, what's it like being the best looking person on TikTok? Not true. I'm not even going to pretend like that's actually true. Um, and then, oh, oh, okay. And. I'm just saying, create stuff. Like, it's just, um, I'm going to get back into this in a minute because I got my my dancing and my improv, and I still got to talk about uh, Chris's crazy theories, which is, I tangent in, but I'm going to pull it back. But I'm going to talk about, um, that's why William uh, William wants to make their Tremors movie because I'm here in New Mexico, and I think the landscape is ideal for a Tremors movie or Western Texas. Um and oh yeah, I'm pretty. You two mentioned that in the road trip video. I'm pretty sure it has been. Um, yes, because that. And I actually just noticed today, because uh, there's those Burt Gummer survival videos. Like there's the Burt Gummer bullseye brand pantyhose uh, and his Tabascos and stuff like that. I'm fucking fairly certain those are actually in New Mexico, because I was putting it together and I was like, so hold on. Michael Gross lives in New Mexico. I'm looking at this scenery right now. It's actually not very California or, or Nevada. And it's not like you would go to Nevada to specifically shoot that. You would like to go to some nondescript deserty looking place. And I was like, I'm pretty sure these fucking like the survivalists with Burt Gummer videos are actually Michael Gross just in New Mexico. Like they just went to Michael's house and they're like, Hey Michael, can we go in your backyard or something? He's like, hell yeah, sure. I, you got a gun so I can do this? I, actually, Michael does have guns, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, um, uh, wow, sorry. You guys are getting... I'm getting flowers everywhere, and I don't know how to deal with it. Um, oh, and Kaniki, you're talking about... I don't remember where I've seen it, but I saw a teaser of Trevor's te TV series with Kevin Bacon. There's more than a TV series. There's a whole script out there and whole plot outlines for the following eight episodes. And if you want to hear about it, go watch it. I actually have two episodes on that. One where I read the entire script and another where I take you through every single thing that they were going to do in the Kevin Bacon pilot. And it was pretty good. It was pretty, I'm so sad that we'll never get to see that. And we never will get to see that because it's in the same vault as Coyote versus Acme and, and Batgirl, which goes back to my original thing that like, if you're creating something, who cares if it's not going to get all the money for it, just fucking put it out there and it's done and it's made and it's beautiful. And I like, that's, that just, just makes me mad. Um, and like said, Anthony said, Back to the Future is a perfect movie, a uh, film school movie. And then actually I saw you doing this. Was it last year, uh, William, where you're trying to put uh, Tremors in the National Film Registry? That's a fucking beautiful idea. Um, and oh, my God, thank you. The opening scene for our second film is amazing. That is one of the things I am most proud of like it's not is it perfect no but i love the concept of because every other tremors movie starts with a kill or not every because the first one doesn't but every other tremors movie starts with somebody being killed and it doesn't really affect the plot besides to partially put it in motion or at least let you know that the plot is in motion 
what I really loved about making that Tremors movie, our Tremors movie, Tremors Hunting Ground, is that that, like, that opening kill is the movie, is the point of the movie. Like, that is everything. Like, the, the, the following 60 min 50 minutes after that is about that. It's not just like, oh, that person died, now we're going to move on. You know, it's like, no, this is, that happened, and it's effective, and it keeps you going. Um, and I really love it. To the point where then I want to talk about, um, thank you, uh, <clears throat> thank you for thinking it's dope. Um, and I'm coming back to your two things here, Chris. To the point where, so this is where, uh, like I said, I had other ideas for my Tremors episode sequels that I want to do. Um like I said, there's the one that I want to kill myself in, which is going to be the last one. Like, that's what I would consider the series finale. And I've decided I'm turning this into a TV show, basically, because I have all these really great ideas for good 45 minute or 60 minute. It's like, we're going to turn these into, these are all great. And um, my next one, and this is one that I'm like, I'm, I'm working on now. Now, this is like, this is the one I want to do is it's a Shrieker episode. And the concept is... <laughs> balls to the fucking wall all right like it starts with us hunting like being attacked by shriekers like that's it like there's no cold open like what i was just talking about where like the opening of our tremors movie our, our tremors hunting ground is about like oh then that actually affects the rest of the movie this one is like there's no cold open because the fucking opening of this movie is it that is the fucking and we are in it and if you've never watched, actually, Chris will know this because uh, he just watched it. Uh, Night of the Shriekers, Chris, uh, the the TV show episode, episode eight. Uh, oh my god, the fact that I actually remember the episode number, uh, episode eight of Tremors the series, Night of the Shriekers, where there's this government people and they're training Shriekers, and then oh no, of course, obviously something bad happens, and the Shriekers get out and just kill everybody and it's great and then they all basically hole up in Burt's bunker and it's this one location thing where like they're fucking fighting streakers for like half of the episode and then but this is the thing where it's like I, that's cool what i want to do is i want that to be the whole thing and it literally starts like it's me and justin or one of like s some of us are like a pre-established character and like we are coming in, we're running away from these fuckers because they, as I, as I think about it, where it would be like, okay, so at the end of the last movie is the concept that, uh, the, um, Hey, we brought the, the live baby graboid in and, and Justin's character killed it in front of everybody. And then they're like, okay, so we're going to get help. We're going to get help to do this. But then, <laughs> um, uh, as was established in that movie that the board is really fucking stupid and they take a long, they would take a long time to do anything. So like they they do all of this, like, and this is what would be implied. And you, you talk about this in it, but you don't see it where it's like, they do all this time and all this deliberating to figure out some way to like get money to fucking find Graboid Hunter. It doesn't happen. And there's Graboids out there already. And then there's enough time that, uh, they grow up and they metamorphose into shriekers and you're dealing with it. It's already happening and you got to go like, go, 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 go. Um, and then Justin and I are, our characters are dealing with it like immediately. And I want to, I think I want to do it in the barn because that's a great one location to do that. Um, and it's literally just like us running and I want like be covered and bloodied and shit. And just like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. I fucking just trying to fight them off and, and, people getting eaten and shit like that but i i have the concept like but i just really like it like i said i just want it to be one 45 60 minute episode of just fucking shrieker action and uh william asked how am i gonna do the shriekers buckets all right i actually have a friend of mine um we were already talking about doing this where just making shriekers out of the buck out of a bucket and what you do to a bucket is you cut it, you cut you cut the the mandibles into it. Like ooh, 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 I, why I have an example here. Look at this. All right. So how like with this pop bottle, like the mandibles are here and you cut into it, and then you use like a heat gun and like slowly pry it open. So then you can like you got the like the jaw is doing it, but you're you're melting it enough to like come up and, and do that sort of a thing. Um 
that's one way. If anybody else has any other ideas, like I'm into that because then you can paint that and do that. Um, Because I can't think of anything that's like a malleable um, product to make uh, for that. Like that's my, like I was telling Justin the idea. He's like, so when are we doing it? I'm like, Justin, I'll tell you when we're doing it, when I actually make the shriekers. Like that's my big concern right now is I have to make the shriekers. Um, But now it's my main concern. (laughs) Like that is what I want to do. And uh, sorry, now my brain is trying to think of things that like you can, because it's the mouth. Like you can build the rest, you know, with cardboard and, and more buckets, stuff like that. But like, what's the foam? I'm trying to think of more foamy things. I don't know. If anybody in the chat has any ideas, um, um, because now I'm, I'm yeah, like I said, I'm trying to think of make shriekers now. Um. So that's my concept of it. I'm really, and that's the one I want to shoot because I really want to do one that's fast. Like the other ones, are, and I like the slowness of it, but I want one where I just want to test the camera and the editings and how fast it can go and like clickety click, 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 click. Um, and nobody's ever done the full Shrieker episode before. And that is one that I really want to do. Um, and just to go, I'm going to go back up through here. Night of the Shriek, as Chris says, Night of the Shriekers was epic. That could have been a whole movie and it would have rocked. Yes. Yes, it, it should have been. It should have been a whole movie. Like that should have, like that should have, like that should have been Tremor 7. Like that's like, come on. Actually, the time in between Tremors 4 coming out and Tremors 15, you could have made that movie already and been done. Um, and Chris says, I'd love to see an episode by episode breakdown by you of the TV show. That would be fun. Uh, that's where it's like I need to go back and do because the first time I did it, that was actually when I first started bringing guests in, and I did not realize how that would work. Not well, actually, at all. Um, it was great. I lo- love talking with people, but that I was not. I was not. I was not prepared for that. That was and William. Williams in the chat. I imagine Williams listened to those episodes and knows what I mean by that where I just tried my best because I'd like to, I like to interview people when they're on the show and I like to ask them about themselves more than I need to know about me or anything like that. And I, th- those two concepts of like, we're going to talk about a TV show episode specifically, and I'm going to ask you specific questions. It just didn't work for what I was trying to do to the point. Then I've now learned now we just do straight interview episodes and that's it. And we go different crazy places with it. Um, And where is the the script for the TV show? Uh, well, A, I read it on the podcast here. So there's a podcast episode for it. If you want to find it, uh, go to the Talking the, the Tremors Sagas YouTube channel. There's a, a Talking Tremors playlist uh, with every single episode of this show, every video episode of the show, because uh, there's only two episodes that aren't video. The first two episodes I did, and then my friend Kevin Collins was like, I would love to see you. Can you do like a video episode of it? And I was like, you sh- I sure can. And so episode three, we started doing video. And um, so you can find it there. And then the script for, actually, hold on, where's the, I just, I got to pull it because it won't show it to me now. Uh, to find the show. Oh, yeah. Again, that's where, if you want to find it, go to that playlist. It's, it's all on the Tremor Saga's YouTube channel here. Uh, thank them for hosting. I appreciate it. And, um, because it's really good because it's a two part. It's one of the, it's like the fifth or sixth episode I did. And it was, I, I was very on point. I'm usually very on point when it comes to like, I have a topic to talk about. Um, and uh, I did, I read the whole script It's fucking good. I like it. And then the next episode was me talking about everything that would have gone into that script and like beyond it and why it didn't work out and all that. So if you like that, if that interests you, Go check it out. Um, but anyway, to go back to creativity and just make something, and why I love Baby Fark McGee's acts for just making Burt Gummer Day is that we as people have all the power in the world, and I don't mean that for real, see, so like, not like we are all trapped in a capitalistic hell cycle, and with, most of us are gonna die before we can do anything about it, but it doesn't matter. Because we can try. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm now, I'm in this like bleak site, but I'm also like, just pull up, pull up, Abed. You're doing a nosedive. Um, and it's not working. I'm up here and I'm in here at the same time. And they just, they're like, fuck you. You're wrong. And I'm like, don't tell me what to do. That's not an impression. That's just my brain. 
Um, but uh, what I love about what Baby Fark did is just, hey, I love this thing. I want to spread my love of it, put it out there. I don't care if I get anything back. It just needs to be said. And I think <sighs> that's something that I take for this show. That's where it's like we go off on tangents. We go over here. I decide to eat fucking jalapeno peppers and now there's olives i listen and i love everybody's suggestions and like doing weird shit um it's just this is a cohesive i was gonna say coagulative jesus christ cohesive acquiesces relationship and my thing is that i love tremors and i want other people to love tremors and the th i think the biggest thing is I want everyone to know everything that I do about tremors. Like I do, I can't, I cannot be the vessel of knowledge. <laughs> like there needs to be, there's 8 billion people. Can there at least be like, there's four people in the chat and then six people over here on TikTok. Can there be 10 people that know as much about tremors as I do? Like just for the love of gods, all of the gods, every single one of them can other people know because I can't do it alone. And, and, and in all beautiful honesty of like people should know like they're like, you can't make, a book like John did or a book like Octavio is working on or this podcast or anything that the tremor saga does, like all of their fucking Facebooks and like TikTokings, like you can't make that stuff. If there's nothing there to make it about, like there is clearly and Zilla films, Zilla films said it earlier where it's like, it's so sad how universal has mismanaged the franchise like there's so much here ha fucking chris and colin you were just talking and you talk about it on all your episodes of tremors the series where it's like it makes no sense that like here's this perfect tv show that you could just keep going like you said it even before the mix master plot where it's like man you could why is there not four seasons of this you got because you were talking about Smallville, where it's like, you got a show like Smallville or The Flash, where they're just like, we're doing 12 seasons of this and beating that dead horse till it's gone, and it's not even that great. Like, what are we doing? And then here we got Tremors, the series. It's like, okay, this is actually something. Here is an idea that you could just keep going with. And you said, no, we're good. I'm good on that. I'm like, fuck off. We're not doing that anymore. It's like, that is so dumb. And then even more so when you bring it back and you do five, six, and seven, it's like, oh, you, you know what? We don't need that. We don't need any of that over there. Um, oh, ooh, William came up. Ooh, ch oops, ooh, ooh, ooh. William came up with a shrieker idea. Chicken wire to get the form, then put molding. Excuse me. I think. I think that was the blue raspberry. Uh, chicken wire to get the form, then put molding clay or a foam over the frames that would be good actually i think i think a foam would be good like pool noodles or something like that like repeatedly like you get a bunch of them and you cut cut them in halves and then put it over i think that would work that and there's there's an idea i like that i like that um like there's there's so much to this fandom and this world like you, to go to the the baby fart mcgee's acts of it all you cannot like create all of that Burt Governor-ness and to the point where so then like uh I was saying they you know they went up to you know 20 20 21 and weren't making and then afterwards then they're like I'm gonna you know still do OC dumps and they went well I'm gonna do Tremors the series so two years ago they did 360 some gifts of Tremors the series of Burt Gummer in Tremors the series because you know it's 13 episodes so they just did a shit ton of Burt Gummer gifts from Tremors the series, and they're all great. Fucking love them. And then last year, did Tremors for the Legend Begins gifts, like 150 some of them of, of Hiram Gummer. And then this year, because I was just talking to him, obviously on the docket is Tremors 5. So we're going to get a whole bunch of Tremors 5 gifts. And this is after technically, like, um, getting the, the the flowers for what they've done oh william i gotta say call it a night i love you 
Thank you. Have a good... Oh, working those 12-hour shifts. Work it, baby. Thanks for being here. And actually, I'm going to I'm gonna look at that wire and foam thing. Um, and yeah, you just keep going and keep making, like, something. Like, technically, I've accomplished my goal of my, making Tremors movies and other people doing it. But it's like, no, no, no. This is fun. Like, let's just keep doing it. Like, who cares? I'm going to do this until a fucking cease and desist letter comes in the mail. And then I'm still going to do it. You cannot stop me. I am unfuckable. I have, you cannot stop me. I am unfuckable. I have never been fucked. You tried to fuck me. You're fucking fine. My asshole girl fucking fine. And that is an impression. That is a Malcolm Tucker. Mm hmm. And then, yeah, I gotta go to Chris's thing here. Especially when the ratings, we're talking about the TV show, especially when the ratings sound like they were good and the show is so young, just give it time. The TV show, like Firefly, you know, such a waste. What is, what do you, what, 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 what? I said, Scrooge McDuck, explain yourself with the Scrooge McDuck thing there. Um, Explain yourself. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> and then Williams, good night. Love you, buddy. Thank you so much. And again, I appreciated your message uh, earlier. Uh, that was, I really, I love that. And I saw that chicken wire one too. I think someone was doing a Halloween uh, decoration. Uh, TikTok person, I'm talking to people on YouTube because you people are like, you TikTokers are so fucking wiry sometimes. I don't care. Uh, and they're funner. They're more fun. How did people leave and now I have six people in here? I don't understand numbers at all. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 like I said, I love Baby Fark for just like, I'm going to make something and put it out there. Um, oh, no, no, that's not Scrooge McDuck. That was not Scrooge McDuck. That was Malcolm Tucker from The Thick of It, which is a fantastic show. Fucking yeah, man. Um, Again, you want to talk about writing, good writing, good, great writing on that show. And, um, but just make something. I don't know. That's where one of my favorite, like, Tremors fans, good friend of mine who, like, lost their whole account to doing it was the guy that did Burt Gummer's Subterranean Meme Stash. Him and I had completely polar opposite political views, but... Fucking A, if I did not appreciate all of the memes that he made out of Burt Gummer. Like, you don't get to 70,000 fucking followers on Facebook with shitty memes. And here he is fucking, he was kicking ass with those Burt Gummer memes to the point where I'm pretty sure Facebook took him down for being a dangerous individual. <laughs> like, that would be my, like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, but it's it doesn't, like I said, I don't have to agree with him to be like, that's still awesome. That's great. Um, oh. Um, who am I thinking about right now? Oh my god. Uh, somebody, it's not, I could say Zach or Zoran, but it's not them. Somebody I'm thinking about right now. Oh, I'm gonna, it'll probably pop up. I'm gonna talk about Chris. I'm gonna talk about Chris Andro. Andrew. I don't know how to say your last name. It's no Burslaw Flut, but I, Andro. I'm gonna, Androw. Andrabada strain. Like Chris over here. Chris has these crazy theories on, uh, the horrific podcast that look, are they always right? And no, but I appreciate the fuck how, of how they swing for the fences. Like it's one of those, like that, you know what? I, I, I don't have to agree with what you do, but God damn, if I don't respect the fuck out of it. <laughs> or I think that actually that's Anchorman that I'm thinking there's an admin spot of Anchorman where it's, <laughs> You know, Rod Burgundy, <laughs> I don't have to like you, but I respect the fuck out of what you do. <laughs> and, um, but in fairness, 75% of Chris's, uh, and Drew, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that, thank you for correcting me. Chris and Drew, uh, as these Chris's crazy theories on the horrific podcast, which go check them out. There's a whole bunch of, it's not just tremors. Although they have done every episode of tremors, a series and all the movies. And they're great. I love Chris and Colin. Um, but Chris has these Chris's crazy theories. And that counts as an impression. Um, and they're like, I love how 
even when you're wrong. Um, no, no, no. See, I disagree, Chris. The only ones that I think were really wrong, and this is why I wanted to talk about this, was that, okay, so, and it, cause it was funny, because once you got new information, you're like, oh, okay, so that was bad. <laughs> that was a bad one. It was the one where it's like, oh, I think that the reason that uh, ass blasters became a thing was because the Graboids and the Shriekers have been, like, eating oil in recent years, and now they're evolving <laughs> to, like, shoot fire out of their ass. And I was like, man, that is not how evolution <laughs> works at all. Not even in crazy Tremor science fiction land does that fucking pan out at all. But it's funny, and I love it. And then the other one, which is one not last week, but the week before, where you were talking about, um, or no, it might have been when they found when they found the lab, um, <laughs> uh, where so what if like the Proudfoot Corporation was the one that made graboids and stuff like that, and it's like you basically were like, oh, Trevor's four doesn't have to like happen it's not like a real thing no i know that like trevor's fork and i'd already watched this too but like what if they like made graboids and stuff and i'm just like man look i love you and you're wrong and i love you <laughs> there's no but to that look i love you and you're wrong <laughs> like just like no no trevor's trevor's four still exists it's not a time travel movie, even though Christopher Lloyd is in Tremors the series. There's no time travel involved, um, and that's where it's like it's whatever. But and but in that thing, that's where it's like. So I always love a good theory when you can, if it's going this way, and you can just like gently nudge it this way, just that little bit. Why did why did, that's not nudging? That was like pulling. Sorry. So if it's going this way, and you just like gently nudge it that way there we go that's better it was a better visual for the audio only listeners who yeah i was that was really sexual when it shouldn't have been it feels like it was um oh wow that's so so wonderful tiktok people why are you here saying such hateful things and pre and also if you can't say the whole word then just leave like you're not a big enough person to do it um some really transphobic stuff happening over here. Just love that. Love that so much for you guys. Uh, but I love your crazy theories, Chris. Because like that one about like, what if, you know, Proudfoot made Graboids and did stuff like that. It's like, hey, okay, it, 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 just let's just nudge this over here a little bit. And I would say that let's maybe they didn't make Graboids. But maybe they settled in the valley because they knew there were graboids. Like that would be my, and if you uh, listen to my episodes of the Kevin Bacon pilot, that is actually part of the plot. There's like, um, there's some interesting things happening in the background where you would be like, maybe Proudfoot Corporation and Proudfoot and Trilateral were like, settled in the valley because they knew there were graboids and they wanted to use the graboids to do nefarious uh kind of things um and and that's okay i just so so to go off of chris's uh point here uh that one hurt to say because of how great tremors 4 was <laughs> but it's so strange that mix master was in the same place that the graboids showed up in in 1990 years earlier all right so here's my <clears throat> This is my knowledge time of this. So let's look at it as Graboids have been around since Precambrian times. Although it's been, it was retconned in the TV show to be pre-Denovian. And not in the TV show, but for materials provided for the TV show. Pre-Denovian, Precambrian, whatever. I still contend that they came from outer space and then landed in the past. And that's a whole fucking another can of worms. But let's say these things have been around a long time. All right. I'm not going to say that because we only got Tremors 4, that that's the only time we've seen that. Like, it's not. I fully believe, and I've written plenty of scripts on this, where it's like, no, 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 there were Graboids in medieval times. There were Graboids in, like, 1200 
Tokyo, 1200 AD Tokyo. There were graboids in the Nile when the Egyptians were doing stuff. There were graboids in the Romans. There were graboids when the Aztecs were around. We just haven't seen those adventures. But we can make a logical jump and conclusion by stating what I said earlier, where graboids are like cicadae, or cicada, <coughs> cicada and locusts, and they hibernate on a three to four hundred year stretch so that, that that way their food can replenish and they don't starve and stuff and we say okay so then like every three to four hundred years these things pop out and they do stuff just because at the end of tremors four they said we're not going to tell anybody about this doesn't mean that other people hadn't had these encounters elsewhere and they did tell people about it this is actually something that i i, I take from my love of Doctor Who. Like, just because you have this one thing over here, they're like, we're not going to do anything about it. Doesn't mean that other person over here who's in a completely different circumstances went like, yeah, but you know what? We're going to create an entire organization that's figured out how to fight that and destroy it and beat it. And like, we know every single thing about it. That would be my why did Proudfoot settle in perfection? Because they knew. Like, and there's even a thing in Tremors 4 where Tacopa is talking about my my ancestors. My, uh, I gotta do it. I'm already here. <laughs> my ancestors talked to spirit beasts. Yes. Demons of the underworld. Blind to all and killing. Part of our legend. And he, he makes it, and I love in the movie too, where it happens and he says this stuff, and they're literally fighting the Graboids, and people are looking at him like, what the fuck are you talking about? What did you just say? Uh, okay, scratch that. We're just going to focus on this thing right now. Um, um, and then, sorry, I love you, Chris. How dare you throw your accurate and well thought out facts in my face? What nerve! It's not. This is where it's not even fair for me. And I, that's where I take a kindness approach to this. Where it's like, Chris, 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 Chris. Twenty years of owning this, at least just this. Okay, this was an original bought at Walmart fucking like thing, man. Like, it's not, you're just you're just twenty five years behind. It's not your fault. That's okay. And it's my job as someone who's not, I'm not here to gatekeep knowledge to be like, here's what I know. Here's what I've learned. Here's what, do you have ideas? Let's like mix and match. And that's one where even on Chris's point, because then Chris has a great fucking theory about Tremors 4. Where like, so you've got um, Lu Wong. Yeah, Lu Wong. Because uh, it's Lu Wong and Lo Ping. Ping, yeah. Uh, Lu Wong has her sticks, has her um, has her fortune telling sticks, and she's like always throwing them out, and uh, expect a ferocious arrival or a great conqueror. And then Chris has this theory that like, what if Hiram Gummer's dad had some an experience like that? He like went to a psychic or something, and they were like, "Look, your son's gonna grow up to be a little bitch." <laughs> If you don't do something about this, so you need to like go own a silver mine and like it'll teach your son to like look out for himself and not eat a little kid's gingerbread cake and fucking, and then he'll grow up into Burt Gummer because we need uh, the Burt Gummer to protect our world in the valley from the bad things and stuff. Um, and he was like, Yes, I will. I'll go sell all my money and on, on the silver mine. Uh, fucking love that theory because that is like and i can't say i thought about that it's like one of those like oh that's great i love a person coming in with fresh perspective and being like hey what if that thing that you thought was that the whole time um oh hold on somebody just i got another message here um I get very distracted if you couldn't tell um that thing you hadn't thought about the whole time, what if it was something else? And booyah, there's that. Like, that's, um, it, it's really good. Like I said, that one's really good, Chris. I fucking love that one. Um, and I can't, you have a bunch of them, and I can't, um, although grab Bertoid in terms of like, that's nuts, and I love that. I don't think it's right, but I love that. <laughs> just like, and I'm not even gonna nudge that one where it's just like, Fucking love that one. You got plenty of outer space theory. Of course, graboids are from space. Like, that's just like 
done like dumb duh. i don't mean that dumb it's just like yeah duh i mean we all know that right graboids are from space from space in the past like that's pretty simple um <laughs> that was good but then you had one this week and i just got to call it out where it was so the mix master creation um the mix master creation the planimal the plant and the animal has ass blaster dna in it like i fucking oh my god like i had a that one like i can't i can't even begin to i can't even with that one because it is so like ooh yeah 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 and you know you got to think too that like like if graboids and shriekers and ass blasters have been in that valley for so long that like there's got to be some like ass blaster dna sitting around somewhere right like they're literally combusting out of their ass. There's got to be chemicals in that shit everywhere. <gasps> what if the planimal is shooting upwards with the fucking the ass black? Oh my god, I can't. Brilliant, brilliant. I know nobody else is gonna care or is listening right now. That I thought that that was amazing and awesome. And Chris, Chris and Drew has contributed to Tremors Cannon when. The rest of you need to, to, to buck up. Chris is being a, a regular old baby Fark McGee's axe over here with fucking shit like that. <laughs> like, just reaching for the stars, all pun intended, and just fucking trying that shit. And I just appreciate... I just appreciate it so much. Uh, so if you want to, like... <clears throat> oh, so now i got TikTok people are confused. Okay, so hold on. Just to explain... Tremors Cannon. Well, there is technically there's a Cannon Cannon in Tremors Cannon. Um, that's a sentence, new sentence territory. But in Tremors, the TV show, there is this uh, compound called Mixmaster that allows you to combine the DNA of various animals to create new stuff. So you get it's a planimal, it's part plant, part animal. And there's a new thing now. There's this monster called a 412. That's part rhinoceros, part... I don't fucking remember. Oh, my God. It's like a dog rhinoceros. There's a bacteria cloud that, like, sucks water. Uh, there's a shrimp. Or you're getting to it. Uh, you'll figure that one out. There's a, a shrimp from in the past. Um, no, Fred Ward does not make an appearance, although he was originally supposed to make an appearance when that TV show started in 1993. That's when the Tremors TV show originally started, 1993, and then Sci-Fi was like, no, or Universal was like, no, we don't want it, and then 10 years later, they were like, yeah, we do want it, let's make it, and it's basically the same plots and ideas uh, in both, and then Fred Ward was going to make an appearance in the Kevin Bacon uh, uh, TV show, and and no, they didn't run out of IT, like, there's no, okay, this is where... I love knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge, don't speak like you actually do. No, they didn't run out of ideas for movies once Bert did that thing that Bert did. No, like that's that's the last official Universal movies. There's actually more after them. And that what I'm talking about with the TV show, that came out 20 years ago. So like you can't say they run out of ideas when the birth thing happened. When it's like, no, I guess they ran out of ideas back then. And then the Mixed Master plot is actually a brilliant, hey, if you're going to have a TV show, here's how to like keep it fresh and keep it interesting. Because then they still had Shriekers and Graboids and Ass Blasters. Like that's just how that rolls. Um, and then Mixed Master mixed in with it. It's very, very good. Ooh, and someone's got a J-Series Jeep truck because of the movie. Fuck yeah. Um, fuck yeah. That's awesome. And, and oh, okay, so then this is the point. Willow May here, I think there's a million Tremors ideas that would be good. And, and this is true. Like, that's where I was just saying the thing about there's a bunch of Tremors ideas in the past. You can do a bunch now in the present. And then you go into the future. And then you go into space. And then you go ever. This is just, the, you know, people make fun of Leprechaun in space and Jason in space. And it's like, this you, you fucking, there's a bunch to do here. What are you talking about? I always love, as a present day one, I want Shriekers in Las Vegas or Shriekers in Manhattan. 
because ever or actually graboids in Las Vegas, shriekers in Manhattan, because you can't do graboids in Manhattan. And I just, I get, I have to say that's a personal like pet peeve of just like that. Look, you're misunderstanding the core concept here. All right. Like, and maybe you, oh, what? They're in the subway lines. Just avoid the subway. <laughs> like, it's not, there's not, like, and it's not to, like, and then to, also to get a graboid to the size that it would do something in the middle of New York is that's a lot of food that it's, it would have to eat people to get to that point. And I just, uh, um, and exact, they can't go through rock anyway, which, and that's all rock. It's all concrete. That makes no sense. Um, oh, oh my God. I'm Hold on, Chris. Please tell me you're not leaving. I just gotta, okay. Something in Japan. Uh, although I don't think Graboids versus Godzilla works because literally Godzilla can just step on them. Like there's not, like that is one that just like, there's no match. And actually Steve Wilson, the creator of Tremors himself, when people ask that one, he's like, that's, you can't, there's no story there because they just like, they're just, they're not, they're, they are, they're literally worms to Godzilla. That's a great one. Um, like that. And I got to just got to read uh, Chris's. There were more parts of that theory too. I forgot to get to the DNA for the ass blaster could have come from the ass blaster that came over recently from the circus in the show. Ooh, that's a good one. Hell yeah. Although, uh, as I understood it, uh, it's one of those things. Oh, you know, no, 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 it's fine. Because the way it works is that it's like a percentage of, of uh, offspring. Like, if it's 99% of offspring and then 1% like has the, the mutation, then you need to have that other 1%. And then I'm not good with math or something about those percents combining. It's also science fiction, so it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, but yes, it could have, Chris. Um and thanks, Levi. I love you, buddy. If I can add anything to a Tremors fan like you, that makes me feel really good. I appreciate it. Like, that's where it's, we're all, yeah. And you guys, too, over here on TikTok, the something in Japan. Like I said, I think Samurais versus, Samurais versus Shriekers. I'm always going to that because it's a lot easier. Um, uh, like, Samurais versus Shriekers. Sorry, I'm just, now I'm just in here. That would be a great one. Um, the sand is alluvial. Graboids, Godzilla, Million Tremors Ideas. Um, nice. And hey, if you're over here on TikTok and you want your comments to live forever, like on the podcast, on the podcast that we're doing, I can actually show your comments. Head over to the Tremor Sagas YouTube channel. They allow me to host on their lives on the TikTok and on the YouTube. Head over to at the Tremor Saga on YouTube and join over there. So that way I can use your comments and I can pull them up. And then everybody that watches the podcast in the future can see what you said. Um, I would love that. I'm just saying that would be cool because I love. I, I feel bad with the TikTok people. You guys got great. They're, you got great comments right now, and I don't want them to be deleted by the way that TikTok goes. Um, because here's one: What if the silver mine was just what happened to the eggs that did decompose? I.e., the silver filled the voids the eggs left behind. Um, okay, explain that one more to me. Uh, th thine gold. And yes, Willow made. There's a whole podcast. There's a Talking Tremors podcast. I'm on episode like 60 of this show. This show has been going on for like three years now. <laughs> There's all these video episodes over here. I helped organize Tremors Fest. Fucking, I know Michael Gross. I know the writers and directors and everybody that made Tremors. I know everybody from Tremors except for Reba and Kevin Bacon. But fucking. Even the people that made Tremors barely know Reba and Kevin Bacon because they've become so big now. Um, but, um, yeah, if you want to find out more about the show, head over to the Tremor Saga's YouTube channel. Uh, like I said, and your comments can live forever over here. Uh, and I would love that and appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to try something. Tell me if Chris, if you're here, who's ever here, tell me if this works because it looks like my charge is dying here. I just want to make sure nothing's freaking out. Uh, and what is Tremors TikTok person? Tremors is a whole uh, movie and TV show and universe and world about giant underground worms that turn into dinosaur chickens that turn into farting, flying pterodactyls that, um, and then there's this mix master compound. Okay, cool. Um, Thank you, Chris. Because I'm trying to charge the laptop. It looked like it was dying over here. Even though I did have it fully charged, I think it takes more energy for me to run the stream yard. 
uh, than it does to do the regular camera. And Tremors is a way of life. We're here celebrating Burt Gummer Day. If you didn't know about Burt Gummer Day, Burt Gummer Day was started in 2016 by Baby Fark McGeezax to celebrate Michael Gross's famous character, Burt Gummer, from the Tremors series. It's pretty dope. Uh, and Burt Gummer Day is celebrated on April 14th of every year. So if you like Tremors or Burt Gummer, um, go fucking celebrate Burt Gummer Day, I would say. Uh, I needed to put another sticky on the back of that. It did not work. Uh, and yes, TikTok people, if you enjoy what I'm saying here, there's a whole fucking podcast of this that's been going on for a long time. I mean, not really. Like, three years isn't really that long, but it feels like it to me because of my podcast and I'm doing it. So I get to be like, I'm an old person. And we also eat olives and jalapenos and pickles uh, when I say certain things. It's fun. And actually, me acting like an old person technically counts as an olive. And if you want to give me a reason to eat a jalapeno, I will. I totally will. It's got to be like a good, like, Tremors-related reason. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Burt Gummer Day is in two days, and I guess we're, we are, we, we're partially celebrating by being here. It's a whole thing. Um, where was I? Oh, I was talking about creativity and Tremors fans and just making stuff, uh, because I think that's important. Uh, that's my... One, two, three, four, take on that. Why the hell did I say it like that? I don't fucking know. It was cool. Uh, yeah. Oh. I'm doing pretty good. Oh, which, by the way, and Chris, you'll get this. Because I never did talk about it earlier. And I just wanted to save it for the fucking middle of something. Just to be like, ha, 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 you need to watch the whole episode. You got to watch the whole podcast if you want the juice. The just gonna, I'm going to do it. the juice is loose. <laughs> it's funny because that guy died. Um, <laughs> whoops. Uh, when I was texting Don Michael Paul earlier, and I was telling him about Baby Fark and where did he get the idea for Burt Gummer Day. And he fucking texted something that I considered pretty cryptic. Where April 14th is coming. Bert will rise. Like, and that's the director of Tremors 5, 6, and 7. When me asking about Bert Gummer Day, where did it come from? What's he doing with it? And I text him all the time anyway when it comes to, like, I'm asking him Tremor stuff. And he said, April 14th is coming, exclamation mark, Bert will rise, also exclamation mark. Like, am I alone in thinking that that means something? And if I am, say it. But it was just like, what the fuck? Did, and I even had, and he was, and then he got cagey on me, and I was like, okay, Don, I guess, Bert, what, what the fuck do you say? Like, this is, especially you know me, so like, you're doing this to like fuck with me. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, so who knows? And then he, I saw Tremors as a kid the day before the giant earthquake in Seattle in 01. It traumatized me. Now 20. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. And you got the quote wrong there, Thine Gold. I feel I was denied critical need to know information. Well, we're sorry, Bert. You know, it just like changed all of a sudden. And we would have warned you, but they knocked out the radio tower. Well, come on, Bert. What happened? Well, when the radios went out, I decided to return to the refinery. But en route, I find I'm in an ambush situation. Must have been a couple of dozen of these things. Well, I dropped the first twig with semi-auto fire, but they just kept coming. Sheer like most of them were in front of the truck, so I just popped it into the sixth wheel and ran them down. 
The ones that got on board are handled with a combination of small arms fire and hand-to-hand -hand techniques. I am completely out of ammo. That's never happened to me before. And honestly, I had to take the glasses off because his that's never happened to me before when he does the like what's going on here is some of my like that is some of Michael Gross's finest act. It's all in the eyes. It's just like that's never happened to me before. Like it, I can't even do it right because you gotta be so in the moment for that. Um yeah, welcome to Burt Gummer Day. It's Burt Gummer Day somewhere. Uh, cool. Um, that, that, and like I said, this, this has been great. I love you all. Now I get to talk about things that I want to talk about that aren't Burt Gummer Day related. Um, and honestly, I, I just got to keep pumping up horrific podcasts and Chris and Colin and they're finishing up Tremors the series. Go, go to the horrific podcast on YouTube and go check out their videos. Those are some great guys, and and Colin is partially right about America needs a civil war, but he's also a positivity phobe. That's the only phobe I'd call him. He's a positive phobe. Um, uh, yes, I and I still didn't understand the silver decomposing into the eggs thing. Like I'm, like use it, say it all in one comment because my brain is having a hard time with the logistics of that. I think. Um, but yeah, like like I said, Chris, I was just waiting for Colin to be upset by that Graboids Rice episode. And I watched it today, too, and I was like, I get it. I hate these people, and it fucking suck. Um, but it's, it's just funny. Like, Look, positivity is okay. And I don't think you should do it all the time. I think being there's such a thing as toxic positivity. Like, You don't always got to be like, yeah, I'm happy. Um, uh, again, people are messaging me. Um well, if you want to post it, then go over to the YouTube channel and post it. You, there's tons of characters over there. And and your comment will live forever. I'll even pull it up on the screen because I love pulling it up on the screen. It's one of my favorite things. You're like, hey, look at There's the comment. And you get to live there forever. That's really fun. I think it's cool. Um, but yeah, Colin is a positivity of hope. <laughs> and look, I get it. Um, he's Irish. That would be my best explanation for that. Uh, like he, uh, yeah, I think he's lived through more shit. So he's more inclined to just hate things. <laughs> I get it. I do. I understand that. Um, okay. I I'll, I'll read your comment when you finish it. Thine gold. And anyway, yeah, go check out Tremors, the series. I'm so sad. That should have lasted longer. That's my, I'm glad you guys got that uh, as a palate cleanser because, man, you get to the end and it's not its not like it ends on a cliffhanger, but you'll still be like, there should be more of this. And I'll get to be like, yeah, where have you been for the last 20 years? <laughs> okay. Bert's dad, who owned the silver mine and gave it to Bert's grandfather, was rich because of the silver. The decomposition of the eggs less left room for large deposits of silver. I'm trying to figure that out. Okay. Okay, so you mean Bert's great-great-granddad who owned the silver mine and then gave it to Bert's grandfather was rich because of the silver. The decomposition of the eggs left room for large deposits of silver. Because the eggs were hatching instead of decomposing, that's why its silver mine went dry. I think this is a problem with my brain. It has nothing to do with your comments. Great. And I'm, I'm reading it correctly. I think my brain is just like, but hold on. Okay. So they were hatching. Okay. That's why it was dry. So you mean like the space? Oh, I think that's what you mean. Cause that's what I, I, I get. Okay. I think that's what my brain is. Daphne's here! Oh my god. 
I love you, Daphne. I still have to up video upload the episode of the Run for Your Lives one. My phone has no space on it. I actually, I have been like trying to get rid of videos and such. What the hell? That was weird. Um, so I'm sorry, Daphne. I still need to upload the video episode of Run for Your Lives. And yeah, because it ends up being like a, a four gig fucking um, thing on my phone. And I don't... I. Ever since I made the movie, I've got no space on my phone. So I need to, I'm sorry, Dad. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm going to put the whole uh, the whole three hours. That's why I did the three hour audio because it was hilarious. Um, no, I, no. Um, okay. You, I'll take a tech tutorial. I'd appreciate that. Um, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> that would be now. Okay. Now I am personally terrified about what I am doing wrong. Oh, dear God. Oh my God! Tell me now. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna be in my head now forever about this. Um, just just to pull it up because Daphne thinks I'm. I need a tech tutorial. <sighs> okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. That's okay. Um, yes, the space, and then okay. Um, so this is where I'm getting hung up with your comment, Thine Gold. Is that a the there's a heart above me. On TikTok. That was so weird. What the fuck was that? There was like a Mario heart above my head on TikTok. That was really weird. I did not like that. Um, thank you. I, I I mean, I appreciate it, I think. It just scared the fuck out of me. Um, see, the reason I'm getting hooked up on your uh, your comment, Thine Gold, is that uh, the eggs don't grow like that. They are m m like they're made inside of the ass blaster and then they're leg laid as just the eggs and even decomposing like they wouldn't fill space like that. And then this is where I think my brain is getting really hooked up is that they don't actually find the eggs in the mine. They find the eggs outside of the mine. Like they find the eggs uh, where they're pumping the hot water out. And you would, that's what, because you can't lay eggs like that in the dirt. That's kind of the point. You, They do a thing, uh, like I would imagine turtles, where they dig up a little bit of sand and bury them in there and then, you know, cover it again. And then they swim to the ocean and all that. Um, although I don't hate your theory. I appreciate this conversation on what that could be. Thank you. Um, and then Daphne over here is making me terrified. For a, as she can help make things easier. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> what, you need to tell me now because I'm already here. Look, I'm look. I'm using Streamyard, Daphne, and I'm gonna and I'm I'm now. I want to figure out how to use this instead of Zoom. I mean, Zoom is cool, and I like that. Um, but I'm still terrified now of what Daphne thinks. Uh, in my opinion, which is my favorite Tremors film? I already said it earlier, but it's Tremors Four. The Legend Begins. It's the very one that we're talking about. and But then, that's my favorite film. My favorite of all of them is Tremors, the series. Um, oh my god, Daphne. You're just... Okay, Like I need to talk to you to figure out what you're doing so that I can help you better tell you what you might help. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> It's honestly, Daph, it's super, what I am is just simple. This is all um, stupid and simple. Like, that's my point of it. It is just a camera, and it's a camera on a Chromebook. And then I got a blue ball microphone here and a regular microphone. And actually, so that's my setup for this. And so then there's two tablets running. One, two. This is backup recording in case YouTube decides to, like, ban me for some reason. And this one's always recording. And then I got regular audio recording over here, too. I got audio recording on this one. And then over here is my regular TikTok, uh, which is just the phone. So it's honestly simple. There's just a lot of it. And now I'm getting fingered and hearted and rosed over here on TikTok. I'm so... I, I don't know what's happening. Um, and really, the point of the Chromebook is the simplicity of there's the webcam in it already so i don't have to do anything um you know i do embrace it this is uh 
Daphne, you're into hour two and a half of me embracing whatever. There's there's been sixty episodes of me just embracing how bad I am at this, and that's fine. It was someone was calling me manic earlier, and I'm just like, if you had to spin all the plates I have to spin, you would use every trick and tool in your belt to do the same thing too. You know that was you know I like what what do you think this is? Is this not embracing it? This feels like embracing it. I think so. Like. Also, Daphne, if you want me to eat a jalapeno pepper, you too, Thine Gold. If you can come up with a good tremors related reason for me eating a jalapeno pepper, I will. So, like, just as a point of fact, I eat olives on this show. Every time I do an impression or sing a song or I say that I hate Universal or I talk about the Kevin Bacon pilot. Oh, shit, which I did earlier. I need to eat an olive for that. I need to. Um, I did do I did a Malcolm Tucker impression. Um, or I talk about other podcasts. Technically, I'm talking about Daphne's right now. So yeah, that okay. That's another olive. So that's like olive things. Mm. And sometimes I just eat the olives because I want. Oh, did you see my post, Daphne? Right. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Actually, we just talked about it too. Where the April 14th is coming, Bert will rise. What does that mean, Don? And he didn't message me back. Like, and, and, and you know, Daphne, because we talked about this. Like, he knows me enough to know how to, like, fuck with me. Right. Like, he's good at that. And I, and thank you for giving gifts, Thine Gold. I appreciate that. And you know what? I will eat a jalapeno in honor of whatever the hell Don Michael Paul said. And you did. And I, I knew you made the misquote, the neglected, critical, needful information. And I understand that was a misquote. I just had to, like, do the right one just because that's my autism. Um. But yeah, April 14th is coming. Bert will rise. Like, you don't say that. Like, you can say that. And he was even talking, because like before that, he was talking about, hey, pay your taxes. Bert Gummer's a legend. We should celebrate him. And then he followed it up with April 14th, Bert will rise. And I'm sitting here like, fuck. Holy shit. Oh, shit. That's about a jalapeno and about the Burt Gummer. Oh, shit. I gotta eat the pickle now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, man. Again, audio-only listeners, you just missed... Oh, why is it in my cheek? Oh, my God. It hurts so much. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, so good. My, my mustache is... Is belying how painful this is. Ooh. <clears throat> That's good. Mm-hmm. I will eat all the pickles I need to eat the pickle. Don't yell at me, TikTok person. Ooh. That's good. That's a spicy bitch. Oh, my canker sore. Now it's hurting my canker sore again. What was your other quote? Hold on. Let me look. I'll look. I'll look. Hold on. Hold on. Join your team. Eggs. Decomposition. I replied asking earlier. Oh, out of ammo. Yeah, I, I saw out of ammo. That's why I said it in time with what you were saying. Oh, you got to forgive me, TikTok thine gold person. Uh, It's harder for me to look over here than it is to look forward. And like I said, um, I, I love to pull up the, like, like, there it is. I gotta pull up Daphne's. Is isn't Bert being resurrected? Isn't that a good enough reason? Yes, it is. Oh, the canker sore. I did. I stuffed and I stuffed the salt on the canker sore. I did. You can see it. Can you see it? TikTok right there. That yeah, hooker. Can you see it right there? Ah, uh, urns. I even. I even brushed it with my toothbrush earlier too. Oh, now the, the jalapeno. 
Oh, jalapeno makes the stuff happen up there. All right, so that was good. Um, <laughs> so, so Daphne, how are you celebrating Burke Cumber Day? <laughs> and again, I didn't say this earlier, but I would just let it is my mom's birthday today. So, happy birthday to my mom, wherever she's at. It's still 11 52. I haven't missed it yet. Although, I did say it earlier, happy birthday to my mom, the one who bought me the mic and who rented tremors two aftershocks before tremors one and we watched that and set me on this journey of tremors over 25 years ago thank you to my mom i love you so much it's ironic and beautiful and serendipitous that your um uh your birthday and and dad's birthday are on either side of burt gummer day like i said my mom's birthday is today april 12th Burt Gummer Day is April 14th, and then my dad's birthday is April 15th. And I'm just like, what in the fuck is happening? Whoa. Um, Wednesday. It is my, No, it's Sunday. Burt Gummer Day is Sunday. And Daphne will be editing projects on, on that Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, so, yeah. So, again, happy birthday to my mom, Desiree. Ugh. Desiree Bib, uh, Desiree Murphy Bib Hurtis, whatever the hell her last name is. She's got so many. She got more than I do. Um, and then happy birthday to my dad, Denny Burzloff. Dennis, love you. Love you, bud, wherever you're at. Uh, you did actually, boys called me on your phone earlier, which is adorable. And the boys are downstairs right now sleeping, which is also why I'm partially like, kind of like, kind of like, I'm not like super quiet, but I'm keeping it on the DL. The down Lizzo. Um, but it's fun. I just got, and I got to repeat it again. Happy birthday to my mom and happy birthday to my dad because I'm not going to do this podcast on Monday. But fuck yeah, it's uh, cool. <laughs> Someone on TikTok is talking about the end times now. How awesome. And so I just want to, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, there's one thing here at the end too I want to get to, but. Uh, while Daphne's here, I just got to talk about, I did my dancing two weeks, however many, March 23rd, and it was dope. And I know Daphne is, and Daphne and Chris, if Chris is still here, are the only people who fucking care about this at all. And it was awesome. And, and I'm glad I didn't quit, even though my personal life and soul made me want to. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Daphne. We got all tens, man. Like that's good, and that's like I can't. The the I will talk about the bad thing. Like I just gotta talk. I gotta get it off the table when I need to. Um, and uh, just doing that song and dancing. I love dancing. I have been dancing like forever to the point where when you watch my first Tremors movie that I made, actually it's the second one because my first one would have been the one that's the phone call conversation between Val or between Earl and Burp. Earl's epilogue that I made a couple days after Fred Ward died. But the first tremor, the first like movie movie that I made of Tremors, Tremors Far Afield, has the three minute dancing scene in it. Me dancing to Trouble, like Travis Tritt's Trouble. And um, I just love dance. It's literally just me dancing for three and a half minutes. Um, oh, thank you. And thank you. Okay, I just got to pull. They're proud of me. They're proud of me, TikTok people. You don't know Daphne's proud of me. And Chris is proud of me. And he is so beautiful. And I just thank you. Um I still haven't shared shared the official uh video of it yet because I'm still working through some things on the inside here. Um, but they were very, very cool. And like I said, it was more just I would love to actually have the appropriate amount of time. I had 40 days to everybody else's 80 days of practice. So that was my, like, uh, I would like to really do this for real. I'm auditioning for it next year for real. Um, and I'm super excited. But like I said, we did we did great. Even with half the time of everybody else, we still got perfect tens. Three tens, baby. And we earned every single one. Like, I went out there, and my clothes were dry. And I came out four minutes later, and they were soaked <laughs> with sweat. Like, that was how gross it was. Um just and it was dope. It was fucking dope. And it was to the song Labyrinth Within You from from Labyrinth. Oh my god, Daphne, if you're gonna give me fucking pointers, just give them to me. I can't you gotta 
Daphne has some great ideas for my next performance. Okay, Daphne, what are they? You cannot just you cannot say that shit and just leave me hanging. Just do it. Although my so you can give me like like ideas. Like I will I have rewatched the video so many times. There's one bit that is like I you're always your like um ooh, that's not bad. Um everybody's always their worst critic. Like there's a moment where like I do, I, I go to the side with Kenzie, like she jumps up and then I go to like the side with her and it's literally just my right leg, like moves this extra fucking, it doesn't even take a step, but it just like twitches a little. And I'm like, Oh, that leg should be fucking still. Like it, and nobody else, nobody else is gonna fucking notice that unless you're like really zeroing in on it. But I'm just like that leg. Oh, it's like, it's like there's this like stutter step that happens because it was, I was moving her like fully and holding, it and I was just like, oh, this little ugh, kicky step here, and uh, fuck, <laughs> it was like, it doesn't matter at all. It, actually, the fact that I got um the waltz steps right which were really really hard because it's so hard because you have to go um actually i gotta stand up to do it i'm gonna stand up to do it like, gotta like one turn step together it's the step together because i always think like you use the next one and then as you're going it's one and then you take that extra step with a leg step step together like like one uh, this is legs one turn step to get like and see now i'm i now i'm in my head about it i fucking i can't god damn it but it took me forever to get it right because i realized you have to extend you have to take the next step with the foot that you did not just use no or you did just use because he goes so, so wait here, one, two, three, because it's got to be three, and so then it's, yep, one, two, three, yeah, yeah. It's always the foot that you did just end on, or didn't just end on, which is really weird for me from a, a marching perspective because you're always going opposites. Whereas with that waltz step, you're using the one that you were just using. Instead of the opposite of that, it just fucking. But I got it. I got it, and it looked good, and I was proud of it. Um. Oh, and Chris, the only frame of comparison I have is my wife and I took lessons for months to learn a choreographed dance for our wedding, and I forgot half of the steps. The moment it's tough under pressure. I fucking get it, man. Um, I'm still me and Caitlin are going to classes just because. Now we learned that there's these dance people down there. We're going to keep taking classes because it's just fun. Um, and then Daphne, okay, what song? Actually, I think you should pick some music from Kill Bill. See, that would either be like, um, I would either do the one, because Caitlin and I's like favorite one from that movie is the the box music that they use uh, that gets motifed in Doctor Who. Again, when he's breaking through the wall. When she's punching up through it, like, I'm coming for you, Pai Mei. Like, that's one of our favorite, like, soundtrack. Um, Battle Without Honor or Humanity. Okay, you got to give me the scenes. I don't actually... See, that's the only one that I know is The Demise of Barbara and The Rise of Joe. Or The Demise of Joe and The Rise of Barbara. Which is the song that plays when she... And she stands up and then he, the five-figured exploding palm the five point palm exploding heart technique i'm not doing it right but it's um dope um give me the scenes about for with battle without honor or humanity or if that's the name of this the scene i was just talking about because i don't know i'm just gonna pull it up just so everybody knows because i appreciate because daphne over here is like she takes pictures of figure skaters and she knows her dance shit. So I uh, personally, Daphne, I worry more about what you have to say about my dancing than what you have to say about my podcast. <laughs> Cause I know the, the podcasting is like a hobby for both of us. 
but the dancing is like your profession. So that's what I would like actually worry about <laughs> what you'd have to say when it comes to that. Oh my God. Thine gold. If you're sending me chilies to um, make me eat jalapenos, um, you bastard. <laughs> uh, oh, and okay. So it's the Oren Ishii walking with her team music. It's just her entrance music. It's the, it is pretty good um although in my for my money i was thinking of doing one i love uh, feeling good. I'm I'm a fucking sucker for Michael Bublé's feeling good. Fucking uh man. Uh, ten chilies per chili, and you'll make me eat a jalapeno pepper. And that's everybody in the chat's got to make me do that. <laughs> ten chilies, I'll eat a jalapeno. But uh, Michael Bublé's feeling good is one that I would love to dance to. And then I was saying this uh, earlier in the show, Daphne, but it's like. Because I had half the time, I want to be a contestant again next year. Um, oh my god! Now you're just sending me. Ch okay, fine. <sighs> okay, make it twenty, and I'll do it. Make it twenty. Make it twenty, thine gold, and I'll eat a fucking jalapeno. Um, ooh, fever is another good song. Um, what was the one? Ooh, well, to finish. Um. Uh. I want to, like I said, I want to do contestant next year. That way I have the same amount of practice time as everybody else. But then I want to do professional. Um, to, actually, it's my friend, Lindsay, who does uh, burlesque. And I would love to do a professional with her. And then a contestant. I would love to, I want to dance with Kenzie again. Because Kenzie was such a great dancer. Dr. Kenzie. Um, and I, I want to, hey, we got to do this right. We got to have the actual time and do this and kick ass at it. And I will freestyle for you after I eat this pepper. Um, but I've been really wanting to... Oh, my God. I can't. Holy shit. That's too big. Give me a tiny one. I can't. I can't lose any time. Ha. I. Hey. 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 I forgot to show the jar. I really want to do um, Lose Control which is by Teddy Swims. I want to do that as a burlesque dance. Yeah, they're sliced. I'm sorry. Th th thine gold. Here's, here's, here's the, the jar so you can see if they're in there. Uh, lose Control by Teddy. Um, I almost want to pull it up on here, but I don't want to lose the TikTok people. It's still very hot, Thine Gold. Sorry. Um, although Fever is another great song. I, I do agree with that. Um, it's just you gotta find that song that speaks to you that like when you're dancing you're expressing something like that was my one that was why that was the thing I brought to the um, I didn't see your quotes there Thangled it did not work hmm. um, that was the thing I brought to our dance that we did was a story of it like how we went and if you've watched Labyrinth, the um, the concept that Jareth is doing all this magic and creating this labyrinth for Sarah, but in the end, she has all the power and she's the one completely in control. And he goes from exerting his force upon her to her breaking free and exerting her will upon his. And then that's the how I and it's so stupid, but I love how it starts with Kenzie's on the ground and then I pull her up and then it ends with Kenzie's up and she pushes me down. Like that was all 100% poo. And it actually, it started with, uh, Kenzie was saying like, she's like, I just feel like I just really want to like push Levi down. I was like, yes, you do. That's the point. here. And I was like, let's let fucking find a way and work that in and make that happen. Um, and we did. And she'd actually never watched labyrinth before until like a couple of days before the show. And she, and I loved her response to it. It was like, yeah, you know, I finally watched it. That movie's 
weird. That I don't. That movie is weird. And she's like twenty five too, so she had, wouldn't have grown up with any frame of reference. But she's like that movie is weird. I was like, and that's all she could. She's like, I don't have anything else to say because I don't know how to like respond to that. Like that movie was just fucking weird. Like weird. Her favorite character was Ludo, which I get. Ludo is dope. Um, ooh, what's the what's the quote? Fine gold, give it to me, and I'll I'll read it. Uh, her favorite character was Ludo, and uh, it's just like no, I get it. It's fucking unless you grow up with that movie too. It's one of those things. It's like, um, what? How high was everybody um, when this happened? Because I don't think I'm high enough now to like deal with this. Yeah, I did not see your quote, Thangold. I saw someone say Greg the Hammer Valentine. But it was dope. That was my... Uh, the That was fantastic. And if I did another one, I need a song that works for story of it. Like, that would be my... That's where Kill Bill, not bad. Like, I don't know about the Oren Ishii entrance because then, like I said, I don't know how to tell the story of that one. But I would try to figure it out. That's where I say I'd go with the box. Box or the end song. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I know, uh, you know, all you had to say was Monday, Thine Gold. I know exactly what it is. Hold on. And I'll even do. Damn it, Valentine. You never plan ahead. You never take the long view. Now, here it is Monday, and I'm already thinking of Wednesday. It, it is Monday, right? <laughs> uh, Moulin Rouge would be a great one uh, Daphne that's actually the song I used to court Caitlin with um, The your song actually your song is Caitlin and I's song like I sung that to her at our wedding that was her entrance song was I sang that to her and then I had everybody else sing it too and you know what oh my god so no joke Tango de Roxanne would be one that I would do like that no you are already you're in my brain girl oh my god yeah like uh man i'm just pulling up people's quotes cuz i oh you're welcome thank you always welcome for the fun thank you thine gold like i said if you want your comments to live forever go to youtube at the tremor saga and and they're there and we're here and this is where the fucking podcast exists um no tango day roxanne it would be oh my god we have a in the brothers of Buenos Aires. I'm on the girl. I'm man who falls in love with her. No, that's I am Sasha. It would drive you, drive you. Roxanne, you don't have to put on that red light. Do do do. Walk the streets for the day. You don't care if it's wrong or if it is right. Roxanne, you don't have to wear that dress tonight. Roxanne. You don't have to say your body to the light. His eyes upon your face. His hand upon your head. His lips caress your skin. It's more than I can stand. Why does my heart cry with the lock feelings I had fine? 
you're free to leave me, but just don't deceive me, and please believe me when I say I love you. I now have a jalapeno out because that was way too much, and I don't care. That was worth the jalapeno. That was worth it. Because I fucking love that song. You know what? That just might be the song, Daphne. That might, like I said, I was already thinking of that one. Ah, oh, because it's so good. Because actually, there was a couple of times where, like, we were talking about doing tangos and, like, in our group chat. And I would say, I sent a gif of El Tango de Roxanne. And I was like, oh, that would be so good. That would be fucking good. Because I'd love to do a tango. It's so fucking intense. That is, like, one of my favorite fucking seen songs in any musical ever like it is because that guy it spends i love it too because he spends the whole movie in his like narcoleptic state and he's like this comic relief kind of thing or whatever and then he just like boom excuse me while i bring the fucking house down with this song and everybody's in on it and then they're even shitting on that girl who's being a bitch to everybody by being like you're the whore and it's just like i'm so good but it uh but it is, oh yeah god that that tango day rocks it and you know what have, uh, now my because this is a tremors podcast now my brain is like um what would tango how would you do like tango day rocks in, in the tremors movie actually to that point so all of the the dancers that I met um, were so good and, and so fantastic and and okay just Chris it sounds like uh, Cletus Poffenberger singing. <laughs> Why does four twelve make my heart cry? These feelings I can't abide. <laughs> That's that was bad. I don't know what that was. Tango de Graboid. Um, but I was I, like I've been telling Caitlin it's like man I just because you want to like work with people that you worked with before and you're always trying to figure out ways to do it and I'm like yeah I don't know how but I want there to be like a legitimate dance scene in a Tremors movie for some reason which is ironic because how do you, like they they go after noise so you can't really have like a dance scene and do that like that's not how that like works or does it although that's actually that's one uh that's one of the ways that like i want to end 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 the series finale like i said i have all these ideas for the uh the movies that i want to do and i basically just want to turn it into a tv show like it's all all of these are like 45 minute to 60 minute long um sequel ideas that i've been doing i want to turn it into a tv show uh that goes that's not technically a tv show but it, it runs like one and uh like that's my like. I, I want to do this thing in the finale, the season finale, where like everybody does dance. Like actually, like I want there to be. Um, this is so stupid, but like in Back to the Future Three, you know how there's like that town dance that they. It's such a fucking weird reference to make for some reason. <laughs> like back, remember Back to the Future Three? And there's that like that dance that they all do, and you know, uh, Doc Brown gets with Clara, and they're dancing, and it's adorable. Um, I want that, but I want it to be the end of that season finale. I want it to be the end of that episode, and uh, that's where I got the the band Mirabilia is doing the soundtracks for my stuff, and it's like I would love to have them actually as the band doing it, and you just like have this thing where they know the graboids are gone or the threat is like actually dealt with and they don't have to worry about it and everybody dances like they actually dance and it's really cathartic and beautiful because it's like, okay, we haven't been able to like express ourselves through dance after and all this law because dancing is a very primal thing. You know, that's what footloose. I always love Kevin Bacon's monologue in footloose. They like dancing has been around for so long that like, Longer than, uh, I was going to say music, but I, I think I would say that dancing has been around longer than music, uh, and longer than spoken word, longer than written word. We have expressed ourselves through dance. It's the easiest way for us to move. Trees dance, you know, uh, bees dance, cats and dogs dance, everything 
dances. That's your way of like expressing freedom and safety. And I think that to end a a, a season of a Tremors uh, series with a town dance and everybody's dancing um, would be really beautiful. Like I said, that's my that's where Tremors death dance. That's the last last episode where then I kill myself because I want to. Um, is them dancing and then actually Caitlin had this really beautiful idea because then like I said it's the it's the episode where my character dies um and hers has already died we would consider the one that I did Tremors Hunting Ground is the first episode and so hers has died and then mine has died and then the town is dancing and then our like you would have our ghosts like dancing too in a partially metaphorical, partially non-metaphorical sense. If you've never seen the TV show blind spotting, this is actually where the idea comes from where, and honestly, Oh my God, Daphne, you, you should seek out blind spotting. I say, I say that because it's a, <laughs> it's this TV show about this, <laughs> this girl who on the, like right before her, her boyfriend proposes to her, they find a whole bunch of drugs in his house and they haul them off and they have a son and it's two seasons of them like dealing with miles being in jail and her trying to figure out a, how to tell the son and then dealing with that and then like going back and forth. And it's actually written and created by David Diggs, who was Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson and Lafayette and Hamilton. And there's actually a movie too that he starred in. Uh, with Raphael Casal, who was in uh, Loki season two. He was the bad guy in Loki season two. And blind spotting is so good because they do this great combination of, there's a lot of times where they will do spoken word directly to the camera. They will rap directly to the camera. They will sing directly at the camera. Um, and then dance there will be moments like where it is interpretive dance and it's literally telling a story. Like it is, it is so awesome. And I will answer your question in a second, Chris, like it, it, they, they are dancing and it, it is so fucking cool. Like I can't even like, yes, yes. Yeah. And Andre Lawton from Snowpiercer. Fuck yeah. Um, but blind spotting, like I said, if you love dance and if you love freestyle or anything like that, it is a fascinating show. And I like it. I recommend it to people all the time. And it's only two seasons. Like they two and done it. They knew exactly what they wanted when they went in, in, out, boom, we're done. Uh, Helen Hunt is in it. She plays a mom in it. It's, it's really funny. Um, but the dance in it. Like that would be my like, and so that was where and Caitlin and I like that's one of our favorite shows, and like that was like where the concept came from is that like she even she because she started it as a joke where she's like oh yeah so then like one of us is like that I'm dancing like over there like whatever dead and I'm like so that's like silly but I like it actually because that works on a good like metaphorical level because they are they do like when they're dancing in the show it is telling a story but it also lifts away from it just a little bit not like out but just like a little bit away so that it is giving you information in a metaphorical context is really cool so anyway that's like i said i'd love to end uh end our our tv show like that with a, a tremors dance a tango de graboid as i and i'm gonna pull it up tango de graboid um and then Chris asked, this is a bit off topic, but I've been enjoying the clips of Tremors Fest 2023 on Facebook. Will you be able to stream parts of Tremors Fest 2024? Fuck yeah. If uh, Glenn Maddox not an asshole, that's literally, that's, yeah. But I don't know that anymore. I used to, and I used to put my beef aside, but I don't fucking know that anymore since that guy has gone a wall. And I, like, I would love to, like, last year I set up I, these two Chromebooks, I literally set them up every single time people were in the room and I just set them up for the two hours that people were in there and just recorded, <laughs> like literally just recorded uh, to the point where there's the whole, there's like, there's 20 hours of just footage of just people walking in and out of there. Uh, and I actually recorded one of the coolest things that happened at Tremors Fest last year was when um, 
Lila Lee and Gladys Jimenez, who plays you know, Rosalita and uh, Jody Chang in Tremors the series, saw each other for the first time in 20 years. And they fucking started screaming like schoolgirls. And it's my favorite fucking moment from Tremors Fest. Like, it has nothing to do with me. And I'm like, I am so glad I set these cameras up because this is amazing and adorable. And they, they see each other and they both literally start screaming at the top of their lungs. Like they, cause they, like they were such friends for so long and they like, oh my God, oh my God, I got it all on, on camera. So yes, I would love to stream, uh, Tremors Fest 2024 there. I plan to, I'm going to bring everything that I got there. Uh, however, I, I'll say it. Like if Glenn Maddock wants to be an asshole as he has been doing to me on the internet, then maybe that won't happen, but I'm going to try anyway, because as I do all the time, so that's. But we'll fucking find out. Like, that's my, um, and hilariously, Daphne's got more information on that than probably the rest of you do, because she talks to Pake about it. Like, that's my, yeah. And I never did talk to you two about that, but he has been more mean to me. Like, I told, like, I told Pake about it, and then I, I put my beef and Caitlin's beef to the side, and, and he seemed fine, and then he got more mean recently and i'm just like wow okay that's way to be an asshole so i'm just waiting for that other shoe to drop because i don't trust that guy like at all um and yes chris those two have such great chemistry on the show jody and gladys they they are cute <clears throat> um i'm i'm fine daphne i'm fine what shoe I don't wear shoes, so I don't know what you're talking about. No, Glenn Maddock has like has been mean to me and Caitlin in the past. And then when we went to Tremors Fest last year, I was expecting him to continue being mean because he'd been mean online. And I had told Pick this. And it ended up that like he wasn't. And I just kind of like, you know what? I don't care. Th th this was your beef in the first place. So like if you don't want to like have it, then we don't have it. And he was so kind to me and Caitlin, the whole Tremors Fest, all that jazz or whatever. And then once it was done, went right back to hating again. And so then it's just like, what the fuck? Uh, to the point of like blocking Caitlin and I from his personal fr Facebook page and then blocking my entire family, like my dad, my sister, and my mom from the official fran Tremors franchise uh, Facebook page. Like overly mean for no reason that's my and like i said that's what after after you play nice to me and you do that then it's like and then you just keep being mean to me later when it's still the internet i it's like and you can ask Pake about this or and this is one of, and I, <laughs> i'm already here so this is like i did i talked to Pake about this on the thursday before tremors like we talked for like two hours and i ended up telling Pake about this like oh yeah no he had been like really awful and i was basically at that time just gonna be like you know what i'm i'm not here to fight and i i will ignore you though if you're going to be mean like that but i'm not here to beef and like caitlin like oh, like caitlin was already because it's one of those things where it's like she has nothing to do with it. Like, I run a podcast on it. So if you hate me, at least you're hating a person who runs a podcast on it. She has nothing to do with anything. So she's like, why the fuck are you coming after me? Uh, and told Pake this. And then Glenn was nice. To the point of, um, I got to pull it up. Like, Glenn's in my, I had Glenn sign my, uh, where's it at? Yeah, Glenn's name is in my uh, Seeking Perfection book right there. Glenn Maddock above Ron Howard. Had him sign that. And I had him sign um, his brother's book, The Films of Jacques Tati, because Brent wasn't there. I had him sign it. And I was even like, because I had everybody that I thought was important sign it. Like, hey, if you had something to do with Tremors, you had something to do with Tremors, like sign my book. I think that's amazing. And he was even like, oh, no, I didn't do anything. He's like, hey, yeah, you did. Here you go, man. And it was fine. And, you know, he even came up to me on the first day of Tremors Fest and, like, reached in for a hug and was like, hey, oh, my God, I'm so happy to see you. And it was like, 
really? Because the way that you speak about me online, I would think that you fucking want me dead. So, okay, you know what? And this is what I had told Pate, where it's like, I'm not going to start anything. I will literally follow Glenn's lead on how we like go about this and so when you start that conversation like hey i'm glad to see you. it's like you know what fine fuck it i'm here to enjoy tremors let's enjoy tremors have a great time great to see you and so there's tons of pictures like there's a picture of me and glenn standing next to each other being like hey oh my god what's up and had a great weekend all that jazz literally once the weekend's done right back to hating me on the internet again and i'm just like i now I actually do hate you. Like, what the fuck is your fucking problem? Like, be be one thing to me, man. Don't be multiple things. Be one thing. And I'll deal with that. If you hate me, you hate me. That's cool. If you love me, you love me. That's also cool. I really don't care. This is your life. I'm just following your lead. Um, so to go to answer this question, to go back to Chris's thing, I do plan on streaming uh, Tremors Fest again. Uh because that was a, a great fun time. And I, there's a lot of footage out there that nobody would, would have seen if I hadn't. Um, we'll see. We will see. And that's where I'm glad you're here, Daphne. And actually I've talked about William with, about this and hadn't, I hadn't talked to Pake about the new stuff yet, but it's cause it's more like we're here to enjoy a tremor. I don't really want to bring anybody fucking down with it. You want to talk about how universal as a studio is kind of shitty. I'm into that because they're here. They are. They're like a studio. They're a conglomeration of people and they are worried about money. I, you can fuck off. Like that's fine. Whatever, man. But like when it's one person, you're just kind of like, I'm not into hate fighting. Like right now, like you, like if you want to hate me, that's fine. Like, okay. Like this, I'm here to talk about tremors. Tremors is cool. Have you heard about Graboids and Burt Gummer Day? Dope. Uh, like right now, now I've, I've gotten sad because I've talked about this. I didn't want to talk about this. So the dancing was great <laughs> to go back to that. And then actually, so then the dancing was great. And then the improv was awesome and fun too. And I'm going to be auditioning uh, for the improv group in May. Uh, I sent in my, actually, they were all, I did the improv uh, that night and it was a lot of fun. I had spent a long time since I've improv on stage with people. I, this whole podcast is improvising, so you can imagine what it's like when I do it for realsies of like getting up there with three other people and just improvising and having a good time. And uh, <laughs> this, this is I'll talk about my mental state in a minute when we get here. Um, and it, it was great to the point where all of the people uh, that were part of the nightcaps, not just the people like I was performing with were like, Oh my God, I had no idea that you could like improvise. And I was like, I literally am telling you guys that I can like all the time. I'm I send you my podcast like all the time, Steve, are you fucking kidding me? Um, Ooh, I'll pull that up. I don't know what you're talking about. I apparently need to listen to the apocalyptic improv podcast. Welcome to the apocalypse. Um, Okay. Actually, here, let me write that down. I always like write new stuff down. Uh, welcome to the apocalypse. Uh, welcome to the apocalypse. Um, yeah. But it was fun. It was really just a, a whole bunch of fun. And that was the point, was that it had been so long since I'd improvised on stage that it was more just like trying to have fun and get out there. Uh, see if I could stretch stretch those old limbies. Like I had already been doing the dancing thing, so it was like, you know what? I'm down here where I'm in the same city. Let's just keep doing this and having fun. Um, so I'm super duper excited for that. Uh, like that will we'll see if I make auditions or not. I don't know. Uh, but it was just fun to like try and improvise. And I lost. I did. I did. I lost. You know what? I lost. Technically, I lost improv, and technically, I lost dance. It, one after the other and um ooh baby let me tell you <laughs> so this is what i wanted to bring up as my like problem with my mental state and this is only i would say like 50 percent of it the other 50 percent was that i was incredibly upset with how few people actually came out to support me both times um and and that only i only hate because i get so many people telling me that they support me that it's just like Oh, so, but you, you can't show up for this. So then shut the fuck up. You know, it's what I just said about the like, love me, hate me. I really don't care, but you got to do what the doing this middle shit. I'm just not into like, please. And thank you. 
fuck off. Um, like love me or hate me. Like it's really, like, and it was it's just like, cause I've had people so much of always just being like, you're so great. I want, what are you doing? I want to see more of what you're doing. And I'm like, well, I'm doing this. Oh, well, I can't make that. Well then fucking stop asking me. Okay. I am just not it, like, just stop. Cause it breaks my heart more when you say you can't than if you hadn't said anything. Um, it's just, just stop. Just fucking stop. Uh, so that was 50% of why my mental state is, and it's still currently not great in that place anyway. Uh, but it's why I recently said the things that I recently said on different social medias and elsewhere. Uh, and this show hasn't gone on for a couple of weeks uh, because I've just been like, you know, like, uh, I, you just, just stop, just stop. And I, I just want to know, cause I, I just want you to know, um, Daphne and Chris, I don't mean like you. I don't mean people that are like on the internet. Like, cause I know if you, if you were Daphne, if you were here, I know you would have been there. Like, and Chris, if you were around, I know you would have been in improv. Um, like, I, I just know that. Oh, thank you for thinking I'd have a great night rather than asking me if I chopped it off. You're just horrible. Thank you people. Um, and I look, I'm going to, I'm going to, these are great viewpoints. And I, like, and Daphne said, sometimes it's really hard when you feel like friends don't step up. I like, yep. And then um, Chris is saying, I don't think it's you, Levi. I found in my personal life that many people don't like to leave the house post COVID. I find it very hard to get people to leave their houses these days. I see it too. I'm aware. I'm on a, um, I think Chris, you were here for that last conversation that I had where I was like, I'm on a board. I'm on the Peace Pipe Players Board. It's a theater board in our town. And it's currently really going through troubles trying to get any shows off the ground or to do anything to get people out of the house to do anything. Like, I'm aware of this. However, there reaches a certain point for me. And this actually, this is something that my mindset started uh, a while back when I was asking for help filming my Tremors movie. And all it required was for some people to show up for about an hour to film that boardroom scene. Like, that was it. Like, that's all it, that's all it required. And you could show up, and I was going to feed you, and do, and, and I, A, I was going to feed you there, and then B, I would feed you afterwards. And like I don't have any money, but I'll feed you. That like that's and that's something that, that, that every film thing talks about, where it's like if you can't pay people, feed them. And it's like, okay, and I was, and it's super simple. You don't have to memorize any lines. Here's the the lines are literally written down in front of you, and you can pretend like those are your notes that you're taking at a boardroom, and you don't gotta remember anything. And that's it. And it made me want to just scream how hard it was to get the nine people that I got in the room, in the room. And I was thankful for them. And it was hilarious and ironic in the sense that I wrote that there was nine people in the script, even though I thought there'd be more. And it was just more like fill up the room sort of a thing, but it was just like, exact, exact. You had me at, you had me at food. When's you had me at food? When's the next shoot? Exactly, Chris. And it was just one of those things where, um, okay, you can just show this doesn't take this is no commitment, it's a super easy, it's in town. Most of you, you're not driving that far, just show up and do this. And hardly anybody did. And it was just like, oh my god, so then can you stop saying you want to come out and do something and that you support me? Just stop saying it, I don't care. Okay, just stop. It's so frustrating. Because most of the people, I send them this podcast even, too. And I'm like, hey, listen to me talk about this podcast. Yes, it's called Talking Tremors. But guess what? Like, we're, We are currently not, I mean, technically I'm talking about Tremors, the movie. I'm in, but we weren't talking about Tremors for the last 20 minutes. Like, fucking hey, man. I had a whole speech about dancing and what it does for people as a, as a, as a lifeblood and, and a community of expression. Um, it's not just like, and, I, and people won't watch it. And I'm just like, that's, 
that's fine. Then stop asking me what I'm doing and that you want to watch it. So this is where my frustration came in because for both of these things, the improv and the dancing, they were both the winners were determined by popular vote. And, and if you hadn't guessed by now, I don't win popular votes. <laughs> Do I look like a person that wins popular votes? Fuck no. I'm not going to. I'm a fun person, and I like I like myself. But that doesn't mean that fucking other people are going to show up for me at all. I live in the middle of Iowa in a very red, politically, time of our lives. <laughs> people aren't showing up for me. At all. I'm never going to win. I'm never going to be homecoming queen. And you know what? Don't need to. And that's why it's, I hate a popularity contest. Judge me by my merits and what I can accomplish and my skills. And I'm, and you know what? If I don't measure up, then, then I know that. And then I know, hey, here's what I need to work on. Here's what I need to do better. And, you know, we go from there. When it's a popularity contest, then I get to go, Oh, so I just need to have more friends and family who care about me. Um, yeah, that's not happening. And honestly, I think everybody listening understands. I think we can all relate to that fucking feeling. <laughs> and it fucking that's where that, like I said, that's the other fifty percent of where my mindset of just like. And I lost a popularity contest two weeks in a row. And I was just like, wow, man, I would just, you know, judge me on my goddamn merits. And, um, oh, I, I love you, Chris. And I will say, okay, I'm not, and Chris is saying, I'm not saying this to diminish your feelings in any way because they aren't wrong. But as a hopefully friend, I would want you to focus on the positive. That boardroom scene came out amazing. I would agree. And I do. And like, I did talk earlier about how much I love the dance and how well I did. And even the thing that I focused on was me technically in my one foot that was like stutter stepping that didn't mean anything. And then I'm still like, hey, I'm going to keep going and doing this. Hey, I, I, I lost the improv thing, but I'm still going to audition. I'm still, I'm still doing this. Having a positive fucking outlook is not my problem. And that's not really me uh, being mad at you, Chris. That's more being like, it's not my fucking problem. <laughs> my fucking problem is just like, like you said, it goes back to that Glenn thing. Hate me or love me. You, If you do both, I just don't know what to do. My autism freaks out because I'm just like, I don't know what, I don't know which one of these things I'm doing. Beep, 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 boop, beep, boop. I, I don't know. It's like when you're crossing the street and then all of a sudden it's inception and now the streets are going up and around. Like, it's like, I was just, trying to get over there i am the chicken crossing the road and now the road is above me i don't know where the, and it's over there and it's around me i have no fucking idea what it's doing this road is having a, a, a schizoidal episode uh <laughs> like like i said and for me to have lost t twice and that's my like ugh, that's the thing that really hurt me was just like oh man that's like that's so painful like to really lose in that and back to back. And as much as like, I talk and I do all this, as I said earlier, I talk to share my knowledge and to share my experiences. I don't talk because I think I actually know anything better. My self-esteem levels are like way down here, way busham. Um, and yeah, Chris, I see what you're saying. It's hard to tough to reconcile people's behavior when it's contradictory. And and it, it, like I said, I just don't know what to do. That's the autism in me where I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with that information. I, I just don't know what to do with it. And 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 then, of course, like I said, the mix with the self-esteem thing, then it's just like, then this is my fault that I'm not a good enough person to have friends around me and stuff like that. Why is that telling me I'm low on disk space? Hold on. Now that's making me panic. Ugh. Oh. Oh. That makes sense. Um, oh, because it's recording locally. That makes sense. It's cool. I'm, I'm about wrapping up anyway. I got I got a gig left on this. Um 
like I said, and it just hurts. Like it's my, and I, I, and I'm not gonna say I'm proud. I'm okay with how much that hurts. Um, and 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 that's that's the problem there, Daphne. I, and Daphne says I've learned to counteract some of the darkness with surrounding myself with people who do love and support me, and I do. Like that's where you know I had, uh, the people that drove the fucking farthest. Uh. Uh, I had the people like uh, my friends, uh, Ben and Dessa and Justin and Lana and Joe and Molly and my mom and my dad and my sister and her fiance were there. Like the people like that supported me drove the farthest. They drove from an hour and a half away to be there. And I know that I know that they're there to support me. And you know, I'm, I appreciate that. The problem is and yeah, yeah, the hard part, Daphne says, the hard part is some of the people I count on don't live here, so I don't get to see them as much. Shout out, Pink. We love you. Um, okay. Uh, I Just to answer your question, TikTok person, I don't know. I just get over it. That's my answer to that. Um, but it's the, the problem for me is trying, is knowing those who do care and spend spending my time on the people that do care rather than just because I want to give to everybody. And it's, it's probably very apparent by the fact that I just answered someone on TikTok and I answer you guys like that. I, I like want to give to everybody like this per person on TikTok. No, I didn't draw all of this on my ceiling. I did some of it. This is a lot of my friends. This is a lot. All of the stuff you see up here, all friends, not all. I mean, some of it's me, but this is a lot of my friends. Cause it's just like, here's a box of markers, you know, go to town. I tried to give of myself as much as, as possible. I'm going to die soon. This goes back to that baby Fark McGee's act starting Burt Gummer day earlier thing where it's like, you know, you're going to die one day. What is your life worth? What are you doing with it? Do something with it. That matters. That means something. So that way, when you do die, you get to be like, you're, someone remembers I, I always that's the one thing you know so you die twice once when you die and the second time when your name is said for the last time ever that was the whole point of my merle g klossner episode my friend merle died a couple weeks ago and it made me sad and i brought his name up and i'm bringing it up in the podcast where it's just like merle g klossner merle gene klossner you know born on july 3rd 1962 to in dubuque iowa it's like and to the point where where's Tamar at? Hold on, where's Tamar at? at? I know he's in here. There he is. This is the the boy that Caitlin takes care of, Tamarat. Like she just does that. I, she doesn't she doesn't want anyone to know that she does it, but she does it to take care of like somebody else. I think it's really cute. Like she's always like, I spend way too much money doing that, but I don't care. Like go go Tamarat. Go Tamarat. And go Merle. Like, these are the same things to me. Like, give of yourself. Um, and then, you know, Daphne says, I'm a giver also, but you have to keep some for yourself. It's hard, and it goes against who you are, but you need to do it. I know. But also, I don't. Like, that's my, like, ultimate problem in the end, is that I still don't want to. It's... I still want to give of myself. That's That's... And I'm honestly like okay with that. It's just I want to give to the people that matter. Like I want to give to Daphne. And I want to give to Chris. Like I want to give to William and Edwin and Ben and Zilla Film Studio. <laughs> like I don't need to learn that person's name. Um Oh well, oh my god, Chris, I can't handle this shit. <laughs> god damn you, you fucking dick. You fu you and now I pulled it up, so now I have to read it out loud so that the audio only listeners know what I'm talking about. <sighs> Chris said, I like to think I'm an excellent judge of character, and I think you're a great person who's very giving and you have a tremendous inner joy that's infectious. There, I said it, okay? Fine. Doesn't mean I have to agree with it. I think <clears throat> and actually this is was really it got to me in a really good way a lot. So the guy that did win, uh, DeVille Berkeley and uh, his partner, Megan Johnson, um, came up to me when we were doing the after party dancing. And he was telling me, he's like, I, how do you do it? Like, how do you, like, you just have so much that you put out there. 
and I wish I could do that. And this guy, oh my god, he. And if this had just been judged on dancing, fucking Deville's moves were off the fucking chart, man. Holy shit, it was fucking great. Like, uh, and again, but this is where it's like it hurts because the only reason they won is because Megan works for the local radio station down there, and she brought like ninety people to my. 12 uh, <laughs> like to everybody else is like oh my she did she had like 90 fucking people um to the and this is like the most famous radio station in the area of like hundreds of thousands of people it's just like that's fucking great uh can we be judged on our merits i would appreciate that but it wasn't so bad because like i said deville fucking oh my god that guy can move dude um I just, I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Like, <laughs> I will, Chris, and I'll pull that up in a second. I will, I will say anything. Like, I don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, you know, that's not true. And, no, I will. I will say anything because then you know full well what my opinions are on it or not. But um, the DeVille came up to me and he was like, You just, you are putting so much out there. I don't know how you do it. And I was just straight up with it. It's like, bro, I'm going to die one day, right? Like, that's it. Like, I don't really care. I'm going to die. And it's either, like, be sad about it. And I will be sad about it in my moments when I need to at home <laughs> when nobody else is around. That's why I write those things because nobody else is around. And I'm just yelling at the world. And I've grown up on the Internet. So that's how, like, we solve our emotional problems is we yell at the world. And you, you got to understand – I don't want people to respond. <laughs> like that's why I get, I get, I will get. I, I know I've learned not to get bitey as much anymore. But I'll be just be like, go fuck yourself. Stop responding. I'm yelling this into the ether. Shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm a millennial. This is what we do. Um, and I was like, bro, I'm gonna die one day, and it's either try to do something with it. Or be sad. And you know what? I'd rather do something with it. Like, that's my... That's this whole podcast. I could be sad about what they did to Burt Gummer at the end of Tremor 7. Or I could do something about it. I could be sad about how Stampede Entertainment got kicked out of Tremors. Or I could do something about it. I could be sad that Baby Fark McGee's ex never got credited for Burt Gummer Day. Or I could do something about it. I could do any... I fucking do something about it. And I have. I, I'm... I guess I will say I'm proud of that I have done something. Um, and I will just read it just so Chris is happy. So you'll say anything that I post on the chat for the listeners' sake? Like, go fuck your... Actually, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta do it with the... Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Just because I had to do it for you. Um, and yeah, so that's my, uh, my... Like, I lost the popular vote. And it broke me, and I'm okay with saying out loud that it fucking broke me. Like, that's my opinion on that. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about two things I did see. Um, A, Kinky Boots, and because my one of my dance friends that was in the show with us, uh, Topher, uh, plays the, one of the drag queen angels in it. And Kinky Boots, oh my god, this show fucking rocked. And Caitlin and I keep like, there's two weekends of it, last weekend and this weekend, and we're still like partially debating like we have the boys now. It's like, I would take the boys to go see kinky boots. Cause that was a great show, man. Like that was, I mean, it's, it's about a, a, a drag queen in London. I have confetti. I took confetti uh, off the floor from the end of the show. It's about drag queen in London that ends up helping this guy. Who's got a struggling shoe business make heels. And it's, it's about acceptance of yourself and loving yourself. And it's fucking great. And fucking kinky boots, and I did. I got Topher's autograph. Yeah, Topher Elliot, and Lauren's too. Lauren was great. Fucking loved her. Um, and it was just dope. I know nobody else cares, but I like to talk about how awesome it is. Um, because Topher killed it. Topher was one of the angels, one of the drag queens. Oh my god, that boy can just look and just slay. He's just serving cunt in that fucking outfit, man. <gasps> Damn. God, I loved him. And you know what? He was the youngest of all of our dancers. He was only 20. And yet he's up there this week and last week just being the queeniest drag queen fucking ever. And it was funny, too, because he was wearing these, like, 
underpants. And Keaton and I both had this where he's like, his first pair that he was wearing in the first act were black, so we weren't focused on it. But then he had shiny silver underpants for the second act. And it was like, oh, my God, Topher, all I can do is look at your genitals right now. Or not, or your lack of genitals. I don't know. But I'm just staring every time because that skirt is so, is so short. But that kid fucking killed it, man. Um, and I could tell that his dance partner, Abby, who's a professional dancer. Um, well, what is that? Oh, okay. Um, it was just great. And then the other show that we saw was Little Women. And this is just a high school show. And the reason I'm bringing these up is that Caitlin and I are banned for life from the the theater in our town. And guess what? For reasons we don't actually know. We actually had a whole fucking board meeting about it two weeks ago. And we cried in front of people. And it was horrible. And I was smiling about it. And I really don't want to talk about it because I already had a sad segment of this show. And I'm not doing that. And I, I'll talk about it. We have a next board meeting this, this week. And that was... Whew, Oh, man. It's really sad when someone's like, oh, hey, we need your help to do something. Oh, but you can't help it all. But we also need your help at the same. It goes back to that love or hate me thing. I just need you to fucking pick one. Um, but we saw Little Women uh, because it was a high school show with our friend Chris Doss doing it. Um, and this was another fantastic. So, like, and it was a great double feature with Kinky Boots because, like, they're both about, like, accepting yourself in different scenarios. And I just... I can't, um, I, I want to talk about little women, but it's just like spoiling it. And I'm not going to give that away like that. Uh, but it was even high school. Like I said, they took this very, it was funny. The first act and then that second act just <laughs> nosedive. Um, and they took some very serious, heavy material and they did some great fucking shit with it. And like I said, I had to, I was like, guys, Hey, would you all sign this? And like, why is like, because you're famous to me. And that's like, now I got you guys a signature. And they did fantastic. Um, like I said, I had no idea what Little Women was beforehand. And then then I was crying by the end. And that was my bad. Oopsie daisies. And I have Little Women downloaded on the computer. And Kinky Boots. I'm really excited to watch them both. Um, but it was cool. Uh, yeah, Little Women. I'm just going to say that. Because it was like, yeah, Alexis and Brenna and Holly and Lily and Hannah and Abby and Caleb, like you guys just kicked the ass out of this fucking show. Um, but I would always say, just go support things. That goes back to the creativity thing. Like just go fucking support people and have a good time with it. That's my end all be all on that. Um, and it was, and it was, like I said, it was really good. I just had to kinky boots and little women, two vastly different things. And I loved all of them all the way through. Uh, I just want to check one thing here. I just want to make sure. I do got I got a little bit of time left. Okay. Okay. Um, I was going to talk about media illiteracy in fans, especially Tremors fans, because it seems like some like I don't know how Tremors can be the most well written movie of all time and somehow attract the most media illiterate fans I've ever fucking seen. Sometimes, like I don't like, and it goes. It, it's about that Disney post. Like, like there's the the Tremor saga posted that thing with the Disney uh, Tremors and people are like, oh my god, Disney's gonna make Tremors bad and go woke and all the black characters and how good they they're gonna ruin it. It's like, do you not understand? Can you not tell that's AI art? <laughs> that's not actually a thing. Oh my god, you're just driving me nuts, people. I can't. It's fine. I deal with it. I'm not here to call people stupid most of the time. It's like, well, come on. How can we like? And it's more about our society as a whole. How are people so dumb that we can't fucking context clues? Context clues. Um. Another one I wanted to say, Michael Gross is not anti-gun. I just wanted to get that one out there and say that, that that's he's not anti-gun. Just like Burt Gummer in the first Tremors movie doesn't want Melvin to have a gun and gives him an empty gun. And especially, I wouldn't give you a gun if it was World War III. He, he doesn't, you don't give guns to stupid people. You don't give guns to people who think that AI art is a real advertisement from Disney. I just had to get that out of the way. That's that's just a personal thing I've been talking about. Um, 
And so anyway, I'm going to end. Uh, I want to call Don't Make It Weird. And I want to do a Burt Gumber impression. And I think that's a great way to end the show. Um, this has been fun and great. And I appreciate all of you. And Daphne, if you want, honestly, Daphne, go to the beginning of the show when it's all done and listen to the song that I did. It was pretty good. I was pretty proud of that song. Um, I did the acoustic version of Dig Down by Muse, but with some some tweaks. It was nice. I liked. Oh, speaking of which, um, I just want to give a shout out to Jeff Whitmire, who just did the uh, did Bixby to the tune of Fancy. Um, he did. It was a great parody song. Like that was so good, man. And I really want to learn that and actually do that as an opener uh, to this show because it was. Um, I can't, I'm not even going to like try to attempt it right now. Cause it was so good, man. Like it was so fucking good. Um, but yeah, Jeff Whitmire, uh, got a YouTube channel. Uh, he's got, uh, Twitter and all that jazz. Uh, but Bixby to the tune of Reba McIntyre's fancy. And it is fucking, it is so, it is so good. man. <laughs> like it is, uh, like it's one of those like weird owl level parodies that you're just kind of like, uh, I want, I want to be as good as that. That is, that's, that's the level we're shooting for here. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll call the don't make it weird hotline here. Um, because I always love leaving them messages. And this is, it feels like a good end to Burt Gummer Day. And then I'll, I'll do some thank yous here at the end, but I want to, I want to call them and tell them I love them. All right. Okay, nope, we're done with you, TikToks. And now, oh, there's eight viewers watching. Well, maybe they should go to the freaking Tremor Saga's YouTube live channel. Dumb butts. Uh, three, four, seven, 69. Weird. All right, and I know what I want to do. Oh, wait. Which, by, so what I'm doing is there's one of my favorite podcasts that I love listening to. It's got Dinosaurus D, like these nuts, who it's too late now, but you could have donated to the Kickstarter for something special. This is nothing special. Her first book, read it, is about being an empath with magic, with empathic magic. Fucking love Dina. And then Daniel Quigley, Dank, writing Thunderstruck, book one of the Cryptid Protection Agency. If you like books and you like reading, Go check out the Don't Make a Weird podcast along with producer Sean. They are doing their uh, three years of Don't Make It Weird live show on April 25th. Super duper excited. Love those guys so much. Um, and they have a voicemail that you can call at 347-69-WEIRD. That's 347-699-3473. I did get that right. <laughs> um, and you can leave them a voicemail. And I always like doing that. And I feel like doing it in the, in the guise of Burt Gummer is a good way to end and Burt Gummer Day. All right. Here we go. You've reached the Don't Make It Weird voicemail box. If you have a message for Daniel, Dinosaurus, or producer Sean, leave it at the tone. You just might play it on the show. Thanks for calling. Hello! I believe I'm trying to reach the Don't Make It Weird podcast. Are you the uh, leaders of the feet cult? Um, no, I think no. I think it was horses. Horses, yes. Uh, anyway, I'm calling all the way out here from Chang's Market. Um, uh, Jody and Rosalina thought I should maybe leave you guys a message. I just had to let you know something. Last week, we came across a rather... Uh, Strange creature, individual. Uh, don't know how to put this. Uh, I believe it's called a chimera. Uh, 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 the ancient Greeks might have referred to it as a as a chimera, uh, but they've gone a little yellow around the gills on that one. Anyway, this creature, this chimera, well, it was attacking a lot of us here in Perfection, and I just got to say... That little bastard wasn't good enough for me. Anyway, uh, I uh, had a little fun with it. I went out there and uh, I, I stuck a bullet between its eyes. I, I understand. I should have been a little better, but I did my best. I did what I could with what I got. And I um, 
I did kill it. I and well, in fairness, we did bring it back to Chang's. Uh, we had ourselves a little barbecue, uh, a little little cilantro, a little coriander on top of that baby, and she is tasting fine. Now I know what you're thinking, and, and I do believe I am speaking to uh, Daniel Dina and Sean, the most beautiful and sexy people all of, in in all of podcasting land. I just want you to know, on this most auspicious of days, this uh, Bert Gummer of days, that I love you. I love your voices. I love your faces. I love your feet. I love how majestically you ride horses and um, buffalo. We don't have many buffalo out here in perfection. That's not my fault. That's El Blanco's. Uh, I can't do anything about him. He's an endangered species. Uh, and I just want you to know... Uh, that um, I love you, and uh, you know when I'm out there riding the range, doing a lot, it's uh, it's your show that uh, keeps me going. I can't listen to it too loud, you know, in case the graboid tries to get me. But I got you in my earbuds, and I got you in my heart. And whenever you need, old Bert Gummer, well, you just call three four seven six nine. Nine weird, and uh, well, no, actually, there's, there's no nine. I'm not. I'm sorry, Jody's. 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 She's waving to me. There's no nine. It's just sixty nine. Weird, Daniel. You need to fix that. I don't know. That's kind of a weird fucking number, man. Um. Anyway, I gotta go get pissed on. That's fucking funny. All right. We'll see if that works. <laughs> I gotta go get pissed on. Oh, that's a good way to end it. Anyway, uh, there was a bit of William Shatner in there. I do agree. But I can't. I cannot do Burt Gummer. Fucking, if Michael Gross himself can't improvise as Burt Gummer, how the fuck am I supposed to do it? You know? How? How? How's, how's fucking anyone supposed to do that? Uh, this has been great, folks. I appreciate everybody um, <laughs> getting pissed off because it's bad. Uh, Elsa Gross can laugh at that all she wants, and I'll agree with her that it is funny. At it's character destroying. <laughs> it's not great, man. Um, and uh, I just, yeah, it's fucking. Uh, I, I can't. I can't improvise as Burt Gummer. I can't. I can improvise as a lot of other people, but him. It's just too fucking hard, man. It's just not... Because he's so precise with his language. I just can't get it. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I want to end uh, with thank yous to everybody. Thank you to everybody at Stampede Entertainment. Thank you to everybody at the Tremor Saga for allowing me to use your TikToks and your YouTube... I, I pointed at the wrong things. Um, thank you. I'm s super excited to be here on episode... Whatever number of podcasting this is, it's always fun. Um, thank you to Daphne and Chris who made it all the way to the end. And then of course, thank you to William and Edwin and Ben and, um, and Anthony was in here too. And, um, uh, Zilla film studio. I didn't know their name, so I don't know. Thank you to fine gold and Willow may and whoever the fuck else was on TikTok. And I don't know your names because they're not here forever. I'm sorry. I, that's why I try to say it while they're happening. Um, I appreciate it. All the, all the love and enthusiasm I can give. Um, thank you. Uh, oh yeah, I'll say that when I'm here at the end. Um, thank you to everybody that I've been talking about. Uh, thank you to my dance partner, Kenzie Robinson and Nick Molusky and doing all that jazz, uh, doing within you by David Bowie. That was like, uh, so good. I love that so much. That was such a fun, fucking fun one. Um, Thank you to the Nightcaps Improv Comedy, thank, uh, Steve Jennings and Heather Kablinga's Conga. I cannot. Last names are hard, folks. I'm sorry. Kablinga's Congas and John Covington and Andrew Edmark and Jessica Gordon and Chad Ario. And thank you all so much. And my, my uh, Chad Ario and Andrew Rasmussen and Adam Fast. And thank you guys so much. And DJ OB, Obot, you do. Oh, die. Oh, I can't. And again, last names. Last names are hard. Um, I appreciate the hell out of everybody. Thank you so much. Um, who else am I thinking of here? Uh, thank you to Octavio Lopez San Juan. He was just messaging me today about trying to, like, we're trying to get that last Tremors book written now. The 
de Graboides de Cazadores de Graboides, la historia de la saga Temblores. Um, fucking. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, thank you so much. Um, wait, did I say William? I didn't say William. Thank you to William. And again, I, I'll pull up Chris's. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's always a fun time. And make sure you thank Colin next time you see him. I'm really sad. I'll be sad. I I don't look forward to hearing your final thoughts on Tremors the series because I know you're, you're going to be, you're not going to be upset, but you'll just be like, what? Why? Why did it not happen? I, I get it. Um, Super, it's sad and dumb. Uh, Going through my head here. Again, thank you to my friends that did show up, by the way, Ben and Dessa and Joe and Molly and Lana and Justin and Cheyenne and Zach and Caitlin. Um, and Lindsay would have been there, too. Uh, and Lindsay would have been there. And I know Katy Perry would have been there, too. And then Cole Gaelic and Janora Renner, who was also there. And I love you, Rio. We just went to Rio's uh, done with can not done with cancer, but done with cancer treatment party last night. Love you, Rio, wherever you're at. Um I gave her mom a whole tin of brownies last night, too. I was like, hey, you can use these. Um, thank you so much. Uh, and I will uh, thank you to Anthony and Steven of the Don't Make a Weird podcast. Love you guys. Thank you to Daniel, Sean, and Dina uh, of the We Have Issues podcast. <laughs> Scratch that. Reverse it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it in there. You know what I mean. Um, thank you all so much. I love you guys so much. Uh, do, 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 do. And... I, th I did say thank you, Daphne. I also say thank you, Paik. I you haven't been in here much, Daphne, but I usually am thanking you and Paik uh, a lot at the end of these because I just love you guys so much. Um, thank you to Christopher Dunham at the Cult of Odd. Uh, he's been going through his own depressive episodes lately too, and I feel I feel for him. And thank you to the Hillier family, Dorche and Lizzie Hillier, for reaching out and trying to support and be cool people. I do, Daphne. Like, that's where, man, if people listen to all of this show, they'd be like, oh, my God, you, like, talk about everybody all the time, even when you think I'm not listening. It's like, yeah, baby, what's up? Um, that's just one of them things. Because uh, I just, I like I said, I know, or I'm trying to know good people more and, and, and work my radar better when it comes to that. Doesn't mean I always do, but I try. Um, and you and Pink, I have to say, have always been supportive. So I can't, I love you so much. You and Pake are like Chris and Colin, where it's like you allowed me into your lives and into your shows and say weird stuff about Tremors. And I appreciate it. Like, I know it's dumb, but some of us nerds and weirdos just, just appreciate being heard or being allowed to be heard. Um, oh, thank you to Zorn Gavojic and Megan Gorman, who had their baby, Phoenix, Timothy Gavojic. Oh my God, I love those two so much. And I want them to have more babies. And I want one of those babies' middle name to at least be Hiram. Or as I was joking with Caitlin, I'm surprised that, that they didn't go with Phoenix Valentine Kavojic. But I feel like that would have been a step too far. You can't do Bixby Gummer, but Phoenix Valentine, I would have I bought that. I would have bought that. Um, so that's uh, Jonathan Melville of the Tremors. Got, always got to always gotta shout. Shout, 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 shout that, man. By the wrong, which one? Oh, I'm trying to point. Oh yeah, I don't. It's see, I'm looking at that. By the Tremors Guide by Jonathan Belleville, Seeking Perfection. That way, you don't have to listen to me. You can just read it. You know, uh, and then also go out and buy Steve Wilson's books, like like the, this one, Tucker's Monster. Go buy it and go read it. Um, just go buy more books and read more books. I'm not good at reading them, but go buy them anyway. Uh, appreciate the hell out of everybody. Um, Alicia Pearson, I appreciate you. I know you're not listening, but I appreciate you. And Matthew Carey, I appreciate you. Alex, oh, I gotta say, Alex, wherever you're at, one of the mods of the Tremor Saga, giving me this card. I appreciate you, man. And reaching out. Dave Sentioli, thank you so much. Love you and appreciate Oh, shit. My script fell out. Oh, that's where I put that. I found it. It's fine. We're good. Uh, Kimberly Ann Pierce, thank you. Joel Vanderbush and Sean McAllister and Rachel, Rochelle Buitler and Ellie Allen and Topher Elliott. And, oh, my God, why am I forgetting people? 
and Amanda Rogers and Logan Van Heesey. I'm just naming my dance people now. Thank you all. Thank you everybody that I danced with and Katie Zimmerman and and DeVille Berkeley and why am I blanking and Caitlin Clough. Like, thank you. All of you. I just, I love and appreciate you all so much. Um, and then it's my mom and dad's birthday. It's my mom's birthday yesterday. Today, yesterday, today is yesterday. Happy birthday, Desiree, Bib, Hurtis, however you are. Desiree, I love you. I love you, Ma. Thank you for everything. Uh, I love you, Pappy. Wherever you're at, your birthday's on the 15th. It's on Monday. We're having steak tomorrow. I love you so much. Uh, thank you for everything um, and being supportive. Thank you both. Uh, thank you to my sister who just dropped off kids tonight that I'll play with tomorrow. <laughs> That's going to be fun. I love them so much. Uh, thank you to Eli for being a great guy. Um, fuck you, T-Mac. Uh, cause fuck, fuck you, T-Mac. Go Eli. Um, love you guys. Uh, thank you to Sean Day, Sean Trell, Samaje, Shamar, Sahil, and Sula or Sona. I don't know. There's going to be a new girl coming. And I think Say or say, or what was the one that I really wanted? I'm trying to think of S names with S U or S E in them. I think S O. Sula. I think I like Sula because that was, is it Little Bear or Moon? I couldn't remember. But it was cool. Um, love you guys, wherever you're at. Uh, and as always, thank you to my wife, Caitlin Marie Lutbersloff who's asleep right now. And who, when I come down, she's going to be like, Oh my God, how long were you talking? And I'll be like, as long as I needed to baby. Um, this has been fun. I appreciate all of you so much. Trevor's fest is going to be fun. I'm excited. We should all be excited. Uh, as, and uh, this is great hope and love. will. Oh, you know, and this is actually a good one. I forgot. Thank you to Don Michael Paul. Cause I was saving that for the end. That's right. Thank you to Don Michael Paul for actually answering my text and telling me uh, your thoughts on Burt Gummer day. And I think the last person we get to thank tonight, uh, uh, two last people, thank you to Michael Gross for there being a Burt Gummer. And thank you to baby Fark McGee's ex of Imger, the person who without there would be no Burt Gummer day. For teaching me and all the rest of us fans here to just do something. And maybe one day it'll matter. Maybe it won't. At least we will have done something. And I love the Tremors 4 line. A wise friend once told me, it's not important how you spend your money, but how you spend your life. And I think that is that is the lesson to take from all of this Burt Gummer Day, Baby Fark McGee's Axness. Go celebrate it however you want to. Just you. That's what Burt Gummer would do. You know? And again, thank you. Thank you, Baby Fark. Wherever you're at and your intergalactic quality gifts. And I would that would be my one if you wanted my recommendation for how to spend Burt Gummer Day. Go to Imgur and find out what the fuck that is. And why those people are like, hey, let's do Burt Gummer Day. Like, let's, like, and they just go nuts, man. And it's fucking great. Um, Facebook won't do it as much as you think it will. And Twitter won't do it as much as, and TikTok won't. Go to Imgur, where it started. Go, it's like, go to the birthplace of rock and roll if you want to experience rock and roll. Although, that's fucking. Louisiana, I don't know, that's why I was thinking that. Uh, but just go and fucking, or the Appalachian Mountains, you know, you'd go f fucking feel it and visit it. Like I said, that would be my one recommendation. Go to Imgur, check out the user Baby Fark McGee's X, go see what I mean by an intergalactic quality gift, because those shit, that shit crisp, it crisp, baby, 4K, yeah, beautiful. Um, or make some gifts. That would be a great way to do it, too. Go make some Tremors gifts. Um, fuck yeah. That's probably what I'll do. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it. And as my last thing here, hope and love will win. In the end. You can't see it, but my eyes got all like teary when I started saying it. Hope and love will win. I don't know how, but they will. And, and we just believe. 
I believe and believe I look like Ted Lasso right now. This is the thing I'm telling you. That's not even worth an olive because it's just how I feel. Uh, I may be Burt Gummer. I may not be Burt Gummer. I may be Jason Sudeik is pretending to be Burt Gummer. This has been enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I dig down, dig down, dig down. And, and, you know, I, I, I have it, you know, okay. People danced from the beginning of time. And they danced to celebrate life and death and crops and the new season. And there may have been a time for this law, but no more. Now is our time, our time to dance. Dig down, do, 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 do. dig down, do, 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 do. dig down and find a way. Do, do. Dig down, do, 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 do. dig down, do, 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 do. dig down. It's but gummer day.